All right, um, good morning, everyone. Um, there's just uh, some members still trying to get in. If we can just maybe wait a minute or two, and then we'll be good to go. Are they just still trying to get in? Thank you.
All right, um, colleagues, let us start. Um, good morning. Um, some colleagues had had problems with load shedding and all sorts of other things. So um, thank you very much, ESCOM, for all that inconvenience. Um, so colleagues, this morning we are meeting with the <clears throat> SIU um, to give us an update on the investigations insofar as PPE procurement is concerned amongst others and the issues that <clears throat> were raised yesterday. Um, and um, so I'm sure we'll get an update to that. They may not necessarily have all been included in the, uh, the presentation, which we had received um, on Monday. Uh, but I think um, we will <clears throat> start the meeting now and the other colleagues will join us uh, shortly. The majority of us are here. So colleagues, let me um, welcome you this morning and thank you very much um, for being here. Um, yesterday, on a lighter note, somebody who had been watching our meeting said, the, uh, why didn't I, when I say thank you, then why didn't I say thanks to uh, our team of the secretariat? And I said, when I say colleagues, uh, they are very much included in that because teamwork works. Um, so let's hand over to the head of unit of the um, SIU and welcome him and his team this morning and um, get the presentation and then colleagues will interact with it um, after uh, he is done. So I think he'll go through all of it um, and then we will um, engage with it uh, at, at the end. So HOU, good morning and welcome to you and your team. And um, let's hand over to you because we also have the presidency budget vote um, this afternoon. So that's why I'm a bit agitated in so far as are starting precisely on time. So right. HOU, uh, it does not mean we will not be thorough, but if it can be a consideration for all of us today. So over to you, say, and welcome to you and your team. No, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair of SCOPA, uh, Honorable Members of SCOPA, uh, and uh, my colleagues who are joining me uh, from the Center in Pretoria, uh, those who are in, uh, in the national investigations and, uh, and honorable chair and honorable members. I'm also joined by the heads of provinces in, in various provinces. Uh, as you indicated, chair, some of them reported uh, experiencing uh, connectivity issues. It might be because uh, uh, of load shedding, but uh, they will join in. Uh, once they are ready to. So I will do the presentation. Um, and when the questions uh, are posed, uh, the heads of the provinces where the investigations are really happening uh, will assist in taking the questions, including the national uh, investigation. So we are a team dealing with, uh, with this uh, investigation. Uh, if I were to proceed, um, uh, I'm informed my colleague, Mr. Lecheto, has been given the right to project the presentation. So, Mr. Lecheto, if you can uh, project it, please. Thank you. Uh, with your permission, Chair, I'll move on. Uh, if you go to slide number three. Uh, this one, Chair, I'll not spend a lot of time on it. We always remind us that uh, we are executing the mandate of the Special Investigating Unit as mandated by the Special Investigating Unit and Special Tribunals Act of 1996. Uh, I will not go much. We have already presented several times to the Portfolio Committee on our mandate. If I move on to slide number four, Slide number four, honorable chair and honorable members, uh, we always indicate that uh, as we do our investigations, we always would like to reach these outcomes, uh, of course, informed by the evidence that we would have gathered. We would like our performance to be measured around how we reach these outcomes and based on the evidence, how quickly 
We then institute civil litigation in appropriate instances. How quickly we refer um, matters for officials who are guilty of misconduct according to the evidence and how quickly those disciplinary processes are instituted. We will also want to be measured by how quickly we, in compliance with our legislation, when we find that there's criminal activity, we refer to the National Prosecuting Authority. And of course, it's important that uh, uh, the, 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 the process also uh, is speeded up to ensure that the decision is taken whether to prosecute or not to prosecute. We also uh, uh, would like to be measured on how we interact and collaborate with other regulatory authorities, such, such as SARS, FIC, and you will see later on, honorable chair and honorable members, uh, there's reference to the competition commission and other regulators. So this slide is very important in the sense that these are the outcomes that we seek to achieve and we can only make impact. If all these outcomes are reached, as I always say, based on evidence and they are executed speedily. At the bottom, of course, we contribute towards the improvements in the system uh, to ensure that uh, these irregularities do not occur. We go to slide number six, please. Slide number six just reminds us, Chair, and we present to the Honorable Committee that we do our work uh, with the view of always making an impact. And that impact is at the top is the impact statement of ensuring that we read our society of fraud and corruption, including maladministration and malpractices in state institutions. Of course, we are mindful that uh, it's not only in state institutions, as you will see, that there are also private sector companies that also uh, take part and are implicated in these irregularities. So we'd like to read the society uh, of, uh, of, of all of this corruption and maladministration. We continue to say our vision is that as we do our work effectively, we would like to be the state's preferred and trusted anti-corruption forensic investigation and litigation agency. When state institutions would like to institute forensic investigation, so we would like those state institutions to have the special investigating unit top of mind. And we are aware that we can only be preferred if we do our work effectively. Uh, our work and the delivery programs at the bottom, there's the administration part that supports the middle part, which is the investigations, which is the core business. And we also support our business uh, with program three, which is market data analytics and the prevention. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, the slide number seven, please. Slide number seven, just in brief, honorable chair and honorable members, we would like as SIU, as a leader and stakeholder in the fight against corruption, we have you know, four outcomes that we have really identified as part of this year's strategic plan to articulate our efforts in the fight against corruption. We would like to always be a compliant, high-performing organization that is well capacitated to reach society of corruption, maladministration, fraud in state institutions. We would like to, at all costs, ensure that state assets and cash resources are protected from maladministration, fraud, and corruption for the realization of the full value for money for state programs. We'd like to ensure that confidence in the governance systems and structures and policies of state is restored and maintained with greater focus on consequence management, recovery of stolen money and assets, and of course, following up on referred uh, criminal matters. We'd like to ensure that corruption, maladministration, fraud, and I would add uh, mal, uh, malpractices are deterred through proactive preventive measures. Uh, I'll, I'll move on to slide number nine. 
Uh, from slide number nine to slide number 11, honorable chair and honorable members, uh, we, as we always do, we source the data from National Treasury just to have a view on the expenditure to date uh, that, was, that was spent on the COVID-19 uh, relief measures. Um, so on slides, uh, I'll not go into detail. Uh, all slides really indicate uh, the kind of expenditure that uh, uh, we source, as I say, we source this data from, from National Treasury. Uh, if I just flip over to slide number 12, Slide number 12 indicates that uh, we have determined that uh, the it's total it's total it's uh, it's Chair, it's Honorable it's Chair. I'm sorry, but it may be worthwhile though to take us through the numbers. Oh, okay. Uh, because I think that's, yeah, the, the, I know that we, we had, yeah, let's, let's, let's go through the numbers. Okay. Um, Okay, Chair, then uh, if, if you look at the slide number nine, uh, the slide number nine uh, indicates that the spending actual versus budget uh, of national departments and provinces, uh, that is from April 2020 to March 2020. So we have uh, determined that the COVID-19 relief funds allocated, it's 145 billion. And the expenditure against that is 122 uh, billion. And this includes 60.6 .6 billion on normal transfer payments that is assumed to have been spent on COVID-19 related initiatives. So Chair, that slide, uh, this slide just really indicates that uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see that uh, the most expenditure uh, goes on to support vulnerable households, uh, followed by the expenditure in the health and followed by support to municipalities uh, uh, and, and then other frontline services and basic and higher education, uh, support to public entities, and then other COVID-19 interventions, uh, national employment creation allocation and provincial employment creation allocation. Uh, the highest expenditure there, Chair, as you can see, uh, runs up to about 40.8 40, 40. Uh, billion. Uh, so Chair, th these are, as I said, these are the data that we sourced from, from National Treasury. We couldn't really uh, uh, change much or interrogate them uh, in detail. We just extracted them so that uh, we have that, the, the picture. Uh, the, next, the next slide, which is slide number 10, uh, we just extracted uh, departments as well as Department of Basic Education uh, and other COVID-related uh, spending. Again, it's on, uh, uh, it's in, in April 2020 and March 2021. Uh, as you can see there, the top provincial expenditure on COVID-19 uh, is 28, 28 .9 billion. Uh, health and other COVID interventions in all provinces, basic education departments, and total, uh, that reflects the total spent uh, in, in millions, of course. Uh, so we've, we've now indicated, Chair, uh, well, we've extracted this information that shows now uh, the expenditure by, 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 by provinces. On the next one, we thought it appropriate to just indicate the data that shows uh, spending in local government uh, per province. Uh, uh, we have indicated there, uh, the data indicates that COVID-19 related expenditure at uh, local government spending per province is about 4.5 billion uh, as at April 20 and April uh, 2021. Uh, on the picture chair, you'll see that uh, uh, Houteng and KwaZulu Natal, uh, in fact, no, the number one is Houteng, and the next one would be uh, just slightly above KwaZulu Natal is Western Cape. Uh, you can see uh, 
about 1.2 billion uh, in Gauteng and one about 1.1 uh, billion in uh, in Guazulu Natal and just slightly above Gauteng is Western Cape. We took all of those into account, Chair, and then, as I said, on slide number 12, this gives us a picture of the total COVID-19 expenditure of 126 billion. Uh, this is uh, uh, between April 2020 and March 2021. So now, what we have done is to extrapolate the allegations that we have received and the contracts that uh, those allegations relate to and quantify the, the amounts of the, um, of the allegations and the contracts. So as we sit, as of April 2020 to March 2021, the total value of allegations relating to contracts is 14.3 billion. So honorable chair, honorable members were further, were further uh, analyzed that and said, um, uh, the, the 14.3 billion under SIU investigation uh, is about 11% of total year to date of COVID expenditure. It's so the, the 14.3 billion translates to 11% of the 226 billion. So we've gone further and looked at uh, the outcomes we have reached, uh, particularly on the civil litigation part, because uh, of importance is to ensure that the investigations proceed quickly and speedily to the special tribunal and ensure that uh, the quantified amounts are recovered. So honorable chair and honorable members, uh, of the 14.3 billion that is under the SIU investigation, as we sit today, 614.3 million has already been referred to the special tribunal in order to set aside the contracts and ultimately recover the losses. So this 614.3 million will be broken down later when we report on the civil litigation matters that are at the special tribunal. Uh, thank you, honorable chair and honorable members. I move over now to slide number 13. Uh, just to indicate honorable chair, and again, um, guided, guided by the honorable chair and the committee, these limitations, we reported them before. Uh, uh, so the way we have structured our report is to then say, having reported this before, are there any new limitations that we have uh, picked up as we continue with our investigations? Uh, I would like to report that uh, the limitations as were reported when we appeared at Scopa before to report on uh, the PPE investigations, uh, we haven't really picked up any material differences in limitations that uh, we received as at the time of this report. Uh, and Chair, I need to just uh, specifically indicate that uh, as the president indicated when we first commenced with our, with our investigation, we continue to meet the reporting requirements expected or set by the president. We submitted the latest uh, progress report to the president on the 30th of April of 2021. So these report we are presenting uh, is mainly based on that report and we are giving uh, the, the portfolio committee uh, the contents of that report in the main relating to finalized, finalized matters and the outcomes we have reached to date. Uh, because the ongoing investigations are still subject to uh, some of the uh, legal uh, processes, uh, we have really not included the ongoing, ongoing matters. But I know that the, some of the ongoing matters that have attracted so much public interest that we can really indicate uh, in brief uh, where we are with those. So on the limitations, honorable chair and honorable members, and that's slide number 13 to slide number 16. Uh, uh, we have not established any 
any new uh, limitations. But I'd like to just emphasize on slide number 15. If you go to slide number 15, there's a, uh, it, it, it's an observation that we continue to, to come across around the witnesses who feel uh, fearful. But uh, as we say there, as in terms of steps taken uh, at the bottom, uh, witnesses are allowed to bring in their legal representation and some were sent interview questions which they had to respond to and sent back to the investigating teams of importance, protected their identity and requested them to report to the SAPS if there is indications of uh, unsafety. Another important aspect is that we do, we do disclose and educate them around the uh, witness protection uh, witness protection program. So it is very important, uh, Honorable Chair, that uh, I, I uh, single out these ones simply because we depend on these witnesses to bring evidence forward. And if they are not protected and ensured of their uh, protection and the credibility of the process, uh, our investigations are likely to, to be negatively affected. But to date, we have really ensured that uh, uh, that program works and works well. Uh, another point that I could probably just single out is on slide number 16. Uh, and on the steps taken uh, relating to uh, the availability in the banking industry, um, uh, on the steps taken in that block, uh, it's very important to emphasize that the fusion center continues to be of value. And uh, some of the matters that we will report on also bear the consequences and the results of uh, the collaboration at the fusion center. And the FIC in particular has been very instrumental with the financial profiling of relevant uh, service providers. Uh, of course, we've worked together with them to ensure that we speedily uh, uh, produce, produce the results. Um, now, on the, on the observations, which is slide number 17, the observations, honorable chair and honorable members, similar to the limitations. We've presented them before. These are the observations, amongst others, on the modus operandi that is employed by these corrupt and maladministrated maladministrators, if I were to put it that way, uh, in, in, in order to uh, gain, uh, gain unlawfully from this uh, COVID-19 procurement. So in the past, when we appeared before, uh, we presented these observations. Uh, at this stage, I also need to emphasize that uh, we continue to see similar modus operandi or similar observations uh, as we as we investigate, there hasn't really been any uh, material uh, difference. Of course, we continue to to assess and see how is it that all of these corrupt practices are perpetrated. Uh, just so that as uh, as investigators, we can really be on top of how do we investigate and and mitigate this. So these observations are still as at the tenth of February, twenty twenty one and they are on slide number 17 to slide number 22, honorable chair and honorable members. Um, uh, honorable mem members, I would like to, use your permission, chair, move over to slide number 22. This is the contracts under investigation. If you go to slide 23, uh, the summary of progress, as I said, this is as at the 30th of April of uh, 2021, in line with the report that uh, SIU submitted uh, to, the, to the president. As at that time, the number of PPE contracts awarded for COVID-19 related services under investigation by the SIU uh, is currently 
4,117. And these contracts were awarded to 2,251 service providers. And as at this date, 40% of these contracts have been finalized. 54% are ongoing. Um, I think we've used uh, inadvertently used the word assessed there, but in the paragraph in the diagram itself, it says ongoing. These are ongoing investigations. Um, so all in all, we've got 94% uh, of matters that have been finalized in 40% and 54% ongoing. And we have reported that these investigations uh, that are on our books should be finalized come the end of August. But it's important, as we said before, that we continue to get new reports of allegations of this, uh, of this uh, uh, maladministration and irregularities. And by nature of our work, we cannot close out the new reports being made, but we would like to ensure that uh, uh, the significant part of these investigations, or at least as at the 30th of April, all of these investigations should be completed uh, by the end of August. Some will be uh, completed uh, before end of August, and we will report as and when we are uh, requested in, uh, to, to come and present to SCOPA. The next report would probably be around uh, mid middle uh, towards the end of June. Uh, and we will show uh, another picture of, uh, of the matters, of the summary of progress. The matters that are still yet to commence, and this is the part that I say, these matters also include those that keep coming in. Uh, uh, but uh, as, as we sit, and you can see there, Chair, that uh, uh, they, they uh, count up to 6%. So in terms of the diagram, uh, finalized matters as at the 30th of April 2021, the number of service providers is 835, translating to 1,071 contracts. And the value thereof is 5.7 billion. The ongoing matters, uh, it's about 1,084 service providers translating to 2,695 uh, service providers. And the amount of these ongoing matters translate in value to 7.6 billion rands. The matters yet to commence, we've quantified the value of the irregular contracts there to 878 million. So all of these, as we indicated above, they give us about 14, uh, just above 14.2 billion uh, under, under investigation. The next two slides, Chair, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, we thought it appropriate that we could dissect all of these matters that have been finalized by provinces uh, so that the Honorable Committee can see uh, the the manifestation of these numbers. Um, I won't go through all of them, but uh, just the top three by value. By value, uh, if you look on the right-hand side, uh, the, in, in the KZN, um, about uh, 159 service providers and 249 contracts, those have been finalized and are valued at uh, uh, just above 2 billion rand. And it's followed by uh, bottom left, uh, uh, we, we could not really depict the national investigations uh, on the map. Uh, the national investigations are those that uh, include national departments, uh, national state-owned entities, and other national uh, entities. So uh, by value, it's about 1.2 billion that have been finalized, which relates to 148 service providers and 123 contracts. Uh, the, third, uh, the third one to follow would be Eastern Cape, uh, just uh, at the bottom there, about 66 service providers 
and 67 contracts, translate into about 1.2 billion. Uh, this is what we thought uh, we would do uh, for the honorable committee to see uh, how these numbers translate to uh, by province. Now, on the ongoing matters, slide number 25, again, we dissected them uh, similarly uh, by province. You know, if, I, if I were to pick up again uh, the top three, uh, if you look at above there, I think Mpumalanga, uh, no, sorry, Gauteng. Uh, Gauteng uh, is about 475 service providers. 1,832 contracts, the value translates to about 5.6 billion. Followed by the national departments, uh, bottom, bottom right, 255 service providers, 280, 269 contracts, the value is about 641 million. The third one, the third one to follow, would be Limpopo province, where it's about 30 service providers, uh, translating to about 41 contracts by value. Uh, it follows on the national, about 410 million. So uh, honorable chair, as, as we said, this is really just to assist the honorable committee to read on all of these matters by province. Um, and we can see uh, how they are spread out. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, I will move over now uh, to slide number 26, where we really now start reporting on the, uh, uh, the, the outcomes of our investigations. We'll start off with the civil litigation matters. Uh, again, Chair, uh, uh, we report similarly uh, what, what we reported on the 10th of February, uh, and we then add on what are the new matters that we received since that time and as reflected in the report of the 30th of April uh, that we submitted to the president. Uh, I won't go in detail on these matters, but uh, uh, because we have reported them before, I'll just, uh, uh, just emphasize on the, on the updates of, uh, of these matters uh, and our chief legal Council is in the meeting. Uh, he'll also just add on uh, where necessary uh, in terms of all of these matters. Slide number 27. Uh, the first matter there relates to, uh, in fact, this slide 27 uh, gives the picture of the COVID-19 matters that went to the High Court. Uh, these ones did not go to the uh, special tribunal. Uh, in this, in the first one, uh, the former uh, MEC of Health in uh, in Houten, uh took the SIU to the High Court, uh, challenging the SIU outcomes. Uh, as you can see, the uh, chair, the the matter has since been finalized, and it was ruled in favour of the SIU. Uh, we just really thought as we walk along the presentations would just indicate what the impact of this final finalized matter is. In brief, uh, the, the impact of this uh, uh, outcome, the court confirmed that the SIU reports and or recommendations are subject to a legal review. Uh, uh, previously, the view that uh, we held was that as, for example, if we refer a report to a state institution for disciplinary action, for example, our view was that that is not a final, uh, a final uh, action. Uh, the matter still has to be subjected to an inquiry or a um, disciplinary inquiry where a final decision will be made. But the court had a different view said that report of SIU is the report based on which action is going to be taken, on inquiry is going to be taken. Those reports are therefore uh, reviewable. We do not have issue with that because we believe that uh, our reports and findings are based on the credible evidence that we gather. And of importance, the outcome of this, uh, of this 
decision, honorable uh, chair and honorable members, really is that it does settle the issue around the, 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 the executive or the responsibility of the executive authorities. In our submission to the court, we were of the view that there's a certain standard that is required of the executive authority to exercise the oversight over the department uh, that he or she uh, oversees. And we went into detail in terms of uh, uh, our submissions to court. And the court uh, agreed with the submissions of SIU, deferred and dismissed the, the challenges of the former of the former MEC. So we are pleased that uh, the court has really now settled that matter. That uh, of course it depends, as we always say, on the evidence that we gather that points to the, the responsibility of the, of the executive authority. And we will make a finding based on the evidence that we gather, whether we are of the view that any particular executive authority failed in the exercise of his or her duty in the oversight of the department. So this is a very important decision uh, for, 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 for the state in particular, and I would say at all levels. All officials need to understand the principles and the standard that the court pronounced itself on, particularly the executive authorities. Uh, I thought I would spend a few minutes on that one because it's a very, very important decision. And we will continue to use that decision amongst others uh, to assess uh, uh, other uh, executive authorities as we investigate whether they are found wanting or whether they've executed their duties uh, accordingly. Right, the rest of the matters, Chair, really just give a, an update. The next matter, which is in the Western Cape, is in the Special Tribunal. You'll see on the progress to date part. Uh, this matter is still at the Special Tribunal. The parties are exchanging pleadings and the matter will be enrolled for hearing on the 31st of, uh, of May. Uh, I know the date has passed. I've requested uh, our chief legal counsel to give an indication of what transpired on these dates that have passed. Uh, similar to the next one, uh, which is in the Eastern Cape, uh, relating to uh, the, the project against the Nelson Mandela Bay Metropolitan Municipality. Um, the parties there are similarly exchanging pleadings and applications will be made for hearing on the 31st of May. Uh, again, uh, our chief legal counsel uh, will give a, just a brief update on uh, what transpired on the 31st of May. The next, uh, the next slide, which is slide number 28, please. Uh, slide 28, yes. Um, the top one uh, is the, in the Free State Province. Uh, these are all the service providers uh, where we have found that the, the, the procurement process was irregular. Um, again, in this, this matter is already at the state, uh, at, at this special tribunal. An application to recover losses was launched uh, and the case management hearing is scheduled for the 3rd of May. Uh, again, the date has passed. Uh, I would like uh, our chief legal counsel to give just a brief update so that the honorable committee is kept updated. The next one uh, is part of the matters in the Houghton, Houghton province, Department of uh, Health in particular. Uh, again, the, CFO, the, the, the former CFO of Houghton uh, is also uh, involved in this matter. The pension was frozen. In this case, we are saying the SIU will apply for case management on the 3rd of June, uh, which is tomorrow. Again, still in Houghton, uh, Zakeni Strategic Supplies. Again, it's in the Department of Health uh, in Houghton. Um, in this case, again, we're saying uh, the SIU will apply for case management on 10th of June, uh, uh, 2021. 
uh, case management, just to uh, uh, appraise the police, the, the, the committee, the case management is part of the requirement of the special tribunal uh, way of uh, you know, making sure that the cases are ready for trial whenever they, they come up. So the judges um, expect us to apply for this case management just to speed up the process. Uh, again, in Gauteng, uh, still in the in, in the Department of Health, uh, state SIU versus um, Langeni brothers. Uh, the matter is again at the at the special tribunal. The registrar of the special tribunal uh, in the in the progress to date uh, advised that the date uh, will advise the date by the fifteenth of June. Um, the next one still in the, in in Gauteng, uh, an update there. Uh, is that uh, uh, the team will consult uh, or have consulted on the 24th of May with council and draft summons, uh, which must be issued on the 20th of June. Uh, we'll monitor the process to ensure that that happens. Uh, the next one, uh, an update there. Uh, this one involves the former head of the department in the Department of Health, the update, uh, SIU will place the matter on the roll. Uh, uh, it, it, it appears that it might still remain unopposed. We will hear from the other parties, but the date there is the 10th of June. The next uh, case, uh, again, it, it, this is in the KZN space, which happened in the social development. Uh, the update there, the matter was withdrawn and fresh application will be issued on the 26th of, of June. Uh, I think the, the, the withdrawal was simply uh, based on some of the legal technicalities, but again, we'll, we'll get it back on the roll on the 26th of June. At a national level, uh, uh, in the Department of Land Reform and Rural Development, uh, we have we have freezed the, 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 the pension of, uh, of, of an official there. Um, I think it was the head of the SCM, uh, Mr. Mr. Satsuayo, uh, who was involved in the SCM process. Uh, he challenged our freezing, and we are pleased that the special tribunal has dismissed, when he wanted to appeal, has dismissed uh, his intention to, to, to appeal. And the matter is now set down for, uh, was set down for hearing on the 24th of May. The date has passed again. We require an update from the, from the chief legal counsel. Uh, in the Northwest, uh, uh, the SIU versus Mudiko Tabang, um, this relates to the matters in the JB Max municipality. Uh, the matter was finalized. Uh, this was specifically relating to the pension benefits of the SCM manager, which was freezed uh, in lieu of an action proceedings. So the freezing remains until, until the matter is finalized uh, in, the, in the special tribunal. Again, in the Northwest, uh, the, the matter was instituted against Mr. Selemale, who is the SCM manager. Uh, this, the, the, the court papers, as we always indicate, are public. That's why we are able to mention these names. But under normal, or well, under normal circumstances where the matter has not been to court, uh, we would be unable to mention the names. Um, uh, the update on this matter, again, uh, we will require an update from the Chief Legal Counsel. The date has passed. The SIU is awaiting date for case management and will reply on 31st of May. Um, before I move over to the new matters, uh, uh, sorry, th th this, these were the new matters, Honorable Chair, uh, uh, the new ones uh, since, since the last appearance. Uh, uh, and these ones, civil matters as per previous request to appear, uh, these ones would have been the ones that we reported before. Apologies for that. But I will still give an update uh, on, on that. Um, but before I move on, I would like just to pause here, Honorable Chair, with your permission, 
just so that we, we complete our presentation, the Chief Legal Counsel can give just a quick update on where those matters are, where the dates have passed, uh, and there's very few of them. Uh, Dr. Wells, if you can please update the Honorable uh, Committee on, 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 on what became on those uh, days that have passed. <coughs> good morning. Let's, uh, you can proceed with that first. Um, good morning, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Uh, the specific matters that I'm going to give feedback on are two matters that's on slide 26. That is on the second and third matter. Um, uh, in respect of the Western Cape matter, you will note the heading there, these matters are in the High Courts. So it's in the Western Cape High Court. Uh, uh, um, and the second matter is that the SAU is now filing a supplementary affidavit and we will apply for the, ma for the matter to be enrolled on the 9th of June. This matter, as far as we know, still remains unopposed. Uh, the second matter that uh, requires further reporting is the Eastern Cape matter. That matter has been set down on the 19th of August 2021. That's the day the matter will be heard in court. Uh, we can move to slide number 27. Uh, on the report of number one, the matter will be heard on the 26th and the 27th of August 2021. Um, uh, if we can move to slide 28, number eight and nine, I will report on. Slide 28. Sorry, I think it's 29. Can we move on to 29 quickly? And 29, eight and nine on 29. Yes, eight and nine. The matter that's referred to number eight, that matter, the judgment, the matter was heard and the judgment was reserved. And number nine, number 10, sorry, Chair, date for case management, uh, but the unfortunately one party, the respondent became unavailable. We reapplied for a date, uh, Chair, and we are waiting on the registrar to assign a date. We trust that that will probably in all likelihood happen within the next few days, but at least by the 8th of June, 2021. Thank you. I think that concludes the updates on all these civil matters. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wells. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, um, I move over now to give an update on, it's, a, it's still on civil litigation matters. Uh, on slide 31, uh, these are some of those matters uh, that uh, we've reported to the committee before, but I'll give update. Uh, on in the first one relates to the Eastern Cape uh, matter uh, that uh, Department of Health versus SIO. Oh, in the it happened in the Department of Health, but is the SIU versus FAPCOM and the others. These matters. That's the one. Uh, that's colloquially referred to as the scooter, uh, scooter gate. This matter was heard in the, in the special tribunal and the contract has now been set aside. This, this, is, uh, this is very recent. Uh, in, I think, last week, uh, the, or the chief legal can give the exact date, but the matter has now been set aside. The, the contract was found to be irregular and set aside. Uh, uh, Honorable Chair, we know that uh, this matter we've received, we've seen as, the, as latest as yesterday, uh, there's been uh, uh, media reports that the director of the company intends to sue SIU. Uh, we are satisfied uh, uh, that uh, our matter is defensible as we have demonstrated uh, to the special tribunal the special tribunal has ruled and set aside the matter. The next step in terms of the legal process is to institute appeal. So, so we will then wait uh, to see if there would be any appeal instituted in this matter or not. This settles the matter and we have dealt away with the risk, with the legal risk uh, 
of the contract that was not uh, cancelled. It's now cancelled, it's set aside. So there is no legal risk that uh, you know, anyone can lay a claim on this, uh, on this case. We are mindful, Chair, that uh, in terms of the, the recoveries, uh, there was no money that was paid out, uh, but we are satisfied that you know, initially we interdicted, we had a legal interdict against this payout. Um, so, Chair, we are satisfied that we have done all we could and we're proactive enough uh, with the SIU team in the Eastern Cape to ensure that this money is not paid out. And uh, we're really happy about that. Uh, so we'll wait to see uh, if there would be any appeal process being brought. Um, the next one is the, uh, again, the OR Tampa municipality door to door. The matter has already, has also been heard and the, the contract also was set aside uh, because it was found to be irregular or unlawful. And uh, the, the, the value of uh, 4.8 million was also uh, uh, prevented not to, be, not to be paid. As we indicate there that uh, the department did not pay the amount. We believe it's because of all these legal steps that we are taking that uh, we are able to prevent all these money, this monies from being paid. Um, the next matter, it's uh, the Eastern Cape Alinani trading. Um, uh, again, uh, the, it was enrolled in the special tribunal uh, case management on the 26th of March. Uh, again, Dr. Wells, if you can just make a note and give the honorable committee uh, an update. The next matter, which really runs over three pages. Uh, it's the state, the SIU versus Leisure Structural Development. This matter emanated from the Department of Health uh, irregular procurement uh, that uh, the SIU uh, found in, in, the, in, in the Houghton Department of Health. Uh, again, uh, if you go to, will not repeat what we have said before to the Honorable Committee, I'd like to direct the committee to slide number 34. Uh, the court, uh, the special tribunal ruled in this matter and found that our findings uh, were uh, sustainable and were credible and that the, the contract was irregular and it was set aside. Uh, so so the, the amount of 26 million was forfeited to the state. And this was the amounts which were freezed when we first started in various accounts uh, of the service providers. We are pleased with that outcome, Chair. Um, the next matter is the SI, SIU versus Cabello uh, Mansu Lithuania. Uh, again, this is the, um, the former uh, MEC of uh, uh, the former head of the Department of Health and MEC for Houting. For Houting. The matter has been set down for hearing. Uh, it supposedly started uh, yesterday to the 18th of June. Uh, just a confirmation, Dr. Wells, that the matter has indeed started. Um, the National Department of Public Works and Infrastructure uh, honorable Chair and Honorable Members, the, the Honorable Committee would be very familiar with this matter. Uh, again, this matter relates to the Bay Bridge for offense. Uh, the parties also sought to challenge the jurisdiction of the Special Tribunal. Uh, Chair, we are pleased that the outcome of that is that their challenge was dismissed, and now the matter is ready to proceed in the special tribunal where the SIU would now seek to declare the contracts irregular and set aside uh, and uh, recover the monies uh, that, have been, uh, that have been spent. Uh, again, Dr. Wells, there's a date there that uh, the matter is scheduled for case management. Uh, the parties will meet on the 3rd of May. The date has passed. Uh, you need to just give an update, please. And apologies for this, Honorable Chair. Uh, we could have uh, updated the presentation, but it needed us to really go through uh, the court processes or the, the tribunal processes 
and hence the request for uh, uh, update as we present from the legal team. Uh, from KwaZulu Natal, uh, slide number 36. Uh, these are various matters uh, relating to the uh, social development uh, departments in the in the KZN space. Various matters have been have been uh, have been enrolled. Uh, the the matter, as we indicated, um, uh, was uh, uh, withdrawn, but we will re enroll uh, on the on, on the bottom right of the progress to date. We are saying both matters to be re-enrolled re on the 17th of June. So we are satisfied with the uh, SIU team in KZN that all the legalities now have been uh, dealt with and now the matter can now be re-enrolled. Uh, before I move over now to the slide number 37, which deals with the orders that have been granted by the special tribunal, uh, honorable uh, uh, chair and honorable members, just for completeness sake, if Dr. Wells can indicate the update on slide 35 and uh, give an update uh, on, the, on, the, on the dates that, uh, that, have, that have passed. Yes. On, uh, good morning, one, let me just, good morning, uh, honorable chair and members. On the, on the matter of number five, um, uh, Chair, that uh, matter uh, is running. Uh, it commenced uh, yesterday and uh, we will await the outcome of, 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 of that particular matter. Uh, in, in the matter of uh, number six, uh, Chair, the parties uh, um, uh, had a private case management and that case management uh, set out the uh, arrangements of how uh, pleadings will be exchanged. That was made in order of court. So we got fixed timelines, Chair, up until the end of June to exchange pleadings, heads of arguments, etc., to get the case ready. And then we will apply to the registrar for a hearing date in that particular matter, Chair. Slide 35, that deals with those two matters on slide 35. I think those are the two matters that I needed to report on HAU. Thank you, Dr. Wells. Um, uh, honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, I'll move all over to slide number 37. Uh, we thought it appropriate, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. In fact, I have said to the legal team that uh, it's one thing to get the orders uh, rules in our favor. It's another to make sure that there's actual recoveries now. All of these orders must be executed. Uh, executed in the sense that they must be turned into the money that comes back to the state. And the legal team is on brief on that. They have been given resources to ensure that they speed up that process. So as an, as, as an indication of some of those uh, uh, orders that have been granted, uh, slide number 38 indicates those. Uh, and, and, and as you can see, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the order in the in the SIU matter versus FAPCOM, of course, that one, as we said, uh, no money was paid. So the order was really to ensure that we prevent the payments from happening. Same to the same in the next matter. Uh, we believe that had we not taken these legal steps, steps, there's a potential that these monies would possibly uh, have been paid, but uh, I don't want to uh, uh, hypothesize we had to just take legal steps to stop uh, the contracts and the, and, and the payouts. The third matter is in the uh, SIU, in the ledger matter, this is in the uh, Department of Health and Housing. Uh, that matter has, the order has been given, 139 million contracts set aside. Uh, as, we, as we will indicate later on, about 100 million, over about 99 million was stopped uh, from being paid. Uh, paid out to the service providers. In KZN, uh, uh, the orders were given uh, in, the, in some of those cases 
uh, in, the, in the Department of Social Development. And in the Northwest, uh, uh, there was a, a, a order given as well. So just to emphasize, Chair, these are the orders. Uh, we will continue to report to the committee in terms of the execution of these orders and making sure that we report uh, what is the actual recovery back, back to the state. Uh, we, we, expect, we expect to do that uh, uh, as, we, as we continue to, to report. Chair, this, this brings us to the end of the civil litigation matters. Um, and this civil litigation matters, we have also given the values. Uh, this would have been, this would give a breakdown of uh, uh, the slide, the slide that we, that we uh, indicated of the matters that are at the, at the special tribunal, totaling uh, six, more than 600 million. So this is a breakdown of, uh, of, that, of, of that slide and the matters that are at the, at the, at the special tribunal, uh, totaling about 614 million is on slide number 12. Now, we move over now to, to slide number 39. Now, just to indicate, honorable chair and honorable members, as we presented when we started the outcomes, the, 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 the civil litigation deals with the outcomes relating to the litigation process. And we have reported to the committee before that that is the process that SIU has control over end to end. That is why we are able to tell and, and report to the honorable committee when it started and when they ended and when they will be you know, executed to actual recovery. And honorable chair and honorable members, we are really pleased that the speed at which the special tribunal is adjudicating on these matters, it's really, really making sure that we make an impact uh, and we will continue to ensure uh, that uh, uh, we, we, we speed up uh, our, our matters in, this, in, the, in the special tribunal. Now, going to uh, slide number 39. Slide number 39, uh, slide 40. Slide 40 deals with uh, now the, the matters that we have referred for disciplinary action. Now, this is one of those processes where we do not have end-to-end -end control. Of course, we initiate it. We find evidence in our investigation that officials of state in various state institutions made themselves guilty of misconduct in this procurement irregularities. We take the evidence. We take it to the accounting authority or accounting officer, as the case may be, and we expect that action is taken. We do give update there because we do contact the state institutions in terms of the update of where they are, but we would really would like to see consequence management being meted out for these uh, officials that have been identified. Uh, these are uh, slide number 40, 41 and 40, up to 43. Uh, they deal with the new matters, the new referrals for disciplinary action. And Chair, we have referred uh, these new matters count up to 63 officials. Uh, and this would be uh, at, various, at various levels. And this 63 would exclude the executive authorities that, uh, that we have referred. Uh, Honorable Chair, just to go through it quickly then, uh, the Amatola board, we've referred a, an official there. Uh, all of these, all of the referrals uh, on the charges column really deal with the contravention of the SCM process, thereby ultimately causing the SCM process to be irregular. Uh, uh, in, on, on the first one, uh, we've referred, we referred this to the Amatola board. But Chair, if you can see the progress there, no disciplinary action has yet been instituted against the official. That we, 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 we are really concerned about that. Similar to the second one, where we have referred a matter to the Eastern Cape Department of Education. We have found out and we are reporting 
no disciplinary action has yet been instituted against the official. Similar, Eastern Cape Department of Education is a referral against the uh, middle management official. No, and, and we have the date of the referrals, uh, honorable chair and honorable members. Uh, the first one referred in March, second one in April, uh, third one in April of 2021. Um, uh, third one, no disciplinary action as yet has been instituted. Uh, Chair, we, we're just reporting in this manner um, that, uh, that it, it really concerns us that these matters should be given the attention speed, speedily that, uh, that, that we would expect. Eastern Cape Department of Health, um, uh, it's about one senior manager. Uh, in this case, the SIU is awaiting for a report about the employment relation. Oh, this is the, the previous senior manager who was uh, uh, in the Department of Health and has now moved uh, to, the, to the office of the Premier. Uh, we were informed that uh, the employment conditions changed such that uh, 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 we could not you know, effect or the, 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 the office of the Premier could not effect a disciplinary hearing. Uh, we have given that to our uh, legal department so that they establish whether there's an employer-employee relationship. Uh, unless the person is now a, an independent consultant or an independent contractor in legal terms. Now, uh, if he's an independent contractor, then of course, uh, the, the, the legal framework there is different, but we are busy establishing that, Chair. Uh, but as we already indicated that even in that, even in that instance, he or she may have resigned uh, from the department, we will follow in terms of civil process, and the criminal processes. Uh, Nelson Mandela Bay, uh, against the senior manager, referred in March 2021, uh, a disciplinary board has been established. We are pleased in that case that uh, the, the, the process has started. Or Tambo, senior manager, uh, we presented uh, to, to, the, to the municipal council. Uh, the report was accepted and then taken no disciplinary action though has yet been instituted. Um, chair, the next one, just to go speedily. Um, uh, Free State Department of Human uh, Settlement. Uh, the referral referred in February of 2021 against the senior manager. The, the department is in the process of appointing a presiding officer. There, the, the, the process has started. Houghton Department of Health, uh, one middle manager, the department has confirmed the receipt of the referral and the matter is under consideration. Department of Health in Gauteng, again, again, another referral uh, in December of 2020. Uh, this, is, this is around failure to declare the financial interest. Uh, now, the employment between the company and its employees uh, have been suspended and no disciplinary process of actions are, or this, there's, there's this determination that we found that uh, uh, there's a reference to, according to uh, SA Express, uh, and uh, we would really want to make sure that we explain to the committee uh, the link between that. But as we know uh, that uh, uh, this, uh, this the, in, the employees in the SA Express are experiencing uh, uh, employment conditions changes there, uh, but I would like uh, uh, if we can make a note, Honorable Chair, with your permission, uh, the Houghton team, uh, just to note this and just draw the link between uh, SA Express and this Department of Health. I don't want to uh, guess and say it could be instances where the employee has left the department and joined SA Express, but I would like the, 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 the team to, to to note this and explain. Um, the next one, Houghton Department of Health, about three senior managers. The disciplinary process have been finalized and the SIU and the department are waiting for the final decision. We are pleased about this, Chair, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, that uh, uh, the process has been undertaken there. Uh, City of Tuani, middle manager, uh, the disciplinary process 
has not, not yet instituted. Uh, this is one of our worry. Uh, city of Johannesburg, uh, about five uh, senior management officials, uh, no decision has been taken as yet uh, to institute civil uh, uh, disciplinary processes. National Department uh, of Correctional Services, we have referred there uh, members of the senior management and middle management, about four of them. Uh, no charge sheets have been drafted yet. This SIU is following up on the progress of these proceedings. The National uh, Department of Employment and Labor, uh, uh, three officials will commence. This, the disciplinary hearings of the three officials uh, will commence on the 20 and 21 May. Uh, we can find out and ensure uh, that uh, these matters have, have, have commenced. The SIU will receive feedback once these matters have commenced. <clears throat> the National Health Laboratory uh, Services, we have referred there about eight, eight senior manager and, and middle management. All charges have been issued. Disciplinary proceedings have begun against three officials and the health laboratory services have confirmed that three of the officials have resigned. Uh, again, we'll uh, utilize the same approach where we don't let them just resign, where there's criminal and civil processes we should follow them. Uh, the, still on the new referrals, in KZN we referred seven, seven of, of the senior management and middle management. Uh, the KZN Department of Education is at various stages of action in this recommendation. So we've received a report that uh, the disciplinary processes are being actioned. In the Mpumalanga Economic Growth, we referred two senior managers. Uh, the Mpumalanga Economic Growth has not yet commenced with disciplinary proceedings. Again, uh, another official, the middle manager in the Mpumalanga Economic Growth Agency, uh, in that case, uh, the Bumalanga Economic Growth Agency has not yet commenced with disciplinary process. Again, Bumalanga Department of Health has referred four uh, senior management and middle management. In that case, the HOD has informed the SIU that the referrals have been sent to their lawyers for, for review. Uh, the the, the the Mpumalanga Department of Health met with the SIU for clarity. Uh, the officials will be charged before the 19th of June. This is our uh, information. And now the Mpumalanga Department of Culture, Sports and Recreation. Uh, here it's four senior managers. Uh, the progress report is that verbal, verbal warnings were issued to both, there's two officials, that have been acted upon. There's two officials more that we still uh, have to determine where they are. But Chair, this is for us worrying. We need to determine. Of course, it's, uh, it's up to the due process of the disciplinary process, but we really want to ensure that uh, the punishment that is meted out is commensurate with the charges and the magnitude of the misconduct. Um, uh, we, would we will check that and ensure that we are satisfied. If it is not, then we will consider uh, what legal process is there uh, to challenge the, that outcome. Um, the, the, the last part of the new, of the new matters, uh, the city of Matosana, uh, we referred the middle manager, uh, the manager is currently on the precautionary suspension. The disciplinary hearing was scheduled for the 24th of May. Uh, I can request our uh, Northwest team to give an update because the date has passed uh, on, on, on what became of that matter. Uh, the Northwest uh, Province Department of Health, we referred one middle manager. The proceedings in respect of the, of the referral have not yet started, and the SIU is awaiting a response. JB Max uh, municipality, we have referred one middle manager there. 
uh, again here we're informed that a law firm has been appointed to deal with all of the disciplinary referrals. Uh, we satisfied that uh, the, med the process has started. SIU was requested to resubmit the evidence, uh, which we did uh, on the 13th of May. So we expect that that process should, uh, should proceed. Uh, the Department of Environmental, Forestry and, and Fisheries, we referred there one senior manager. Uh, the SIU has been informed that the labor section of the department has issued a notice of intent to institute disciplinary proceedings. These are all the 63 new matters that, uh, that we have uh, uh, now uh, recorded. We are pleased, Chair, um, that in some instances, uh, the disciplinary processes have started. And as, as the Honorable Committee can see, we continue to follow up because we are an interested party. We would like to see our recommendations uh, being uh, implemented. In all those matters where, where the disciplinary processes have not started, as I indicated that that is a worrying picture, we will of course continue to follow up if it doesn't really commence and we will escalate. Uh, to the to the relevant uh, authorities, uh, if need be, uh, will escalate to the premier of the province, or, or in case of the departments or national state uh, entities, will escalate uh, to the to the executive authority. But chair, uh, that's that's the picture uh, that uh, that uh, that we have uh, of of the new matters. Uh, the the matters that we have reported before uh, are on slide 44 and 45. Uh, these are the number of referrals that we have uh, reported before. Um, uh, in terms of all of this, we give progress updates. Uh, but as, as you can see there on the first one, the official has been transferred to another department and disciplinary action has not yet been instituted. We have ensured that we follow this official to the, to the other department and ensure that he is disciplined uh, wherever, wherever he is. Um, uh, on, the, on the next one, uh, which uh, relates to uh, the Houghton Department of Health investigations, this relates to um, the, the president uh, spokesperson, uh, Ms. Diko, the SIU, uh, as I said, like, it, like we do with all other state institutions, we have contacted the presidency. The SIU has been informed that the disciplinary proceedings against Ms. Diko uh, will start soon, and that Ms. Diko was given a further opportunity to seek clarity concerning the allegations made against her. Uh, so, Chair, we are, we are satisfied that the, uh, the proceedings are underway, and the department or the presidency will continue to give us uh, update uh, on, on where the process is. Again, on Houghton Department of Health, senior manager, the official resigned from the department. Uh, uh, I think as we reported before, this is the uh, CFO who resigned, but as, as we said, uh, we'll continue to follow up. Uh, on the third, on the one, two, three, on the fourth one, uh, still the Department of uh, Houghton Health, it's a senior manager. Uh, the matters of the SIU appeared at the disciplinary hearing and or the members of SIU appeared uh, at the disciplinary hearing. So it is underway. Uh, the official's evidence is currently being led and the last date of this was the 30th of March. The disciplinary proceedings have been finalized and the SIU and the department are waiting on the final decision. We're pleased in this case that uh, there is consequence management, and we will see the outcome. Houghton Department of Health, uh, the middle manager there, the SIU met with the evidence leaders appointed in this matter. The hearing was had in March and April. The disciplinary proceedings have been finalized, and we are waiting for the decision of the chairperson. Again, we are satisfied that uh, there's consequence management been meted out. We just wait for the for the sanctions. In KZN, we referred about six matters as we reported, we will follow up. KZN Department of Education is at various stages of actioning the SIU recommendations. Sekukuni District, uh, 
municipality, we referred five senior managers and middle managers. Of the officials, uh, four of the officials are on suspension pending the finalization of the disciplinary process. One official resigned before being served with a letter of suspension. The disciplinary process is, de is delayed due to COVID-19 infections in the municipality. As we said, we will follow up on those matters. Slide 45. Uh, in the Mpumalanga Department of Health, uh, we referred to two officials, senior managers and middle managers. Uh, in this case, the HOD informed the SIU that the referrals have been sent to their lawyers for review. So the process uh, is, is underway. Uh, Northwest Department of Education, we referred to middle, uh, and middle manager and administrative clerk. Proceedings in respect of one referral scheduled to begin. Uh, this was way back in December, but they've been postponed to 10 and 11th of June, 2021. All right, yeah, so the dates are still coming. Proceedings in respect of the other referral have not yet started and the SIU is awaiting a response. So we'll follow up on that. In the Rato municipality, this is still in the Northwest. Uh, we referred to official senior management and middle management. Uh, the disciplinary hearings have not yet commenced. Uh, because of the court challenges between the municipality and the newly appointed administrators. So we'll follow and, uh, and, and uh, monitor that, that space. In the JB Max local municipality, we referred uh, two senior managers. The two officials were suspended and they have challenged their suspension uh, uh, under urgent court application uh, in the high court. Uh, seeking an order from the court to declare the respective suspensions unlawful. The court dismissed their applications with cost and the disciplinary hearings uh, were scheduled for the 17th of May. Uh, we can give an update, the Northwest team uh, can give an update there, Chair. Uh, perhaps, uh, Chair, just so that we don't, in the interest of time, uh, in all of these days that have passed, uh, we can just collate an, a, a supplementary report to the ordinary, to the uh, uh, honorable committee so that we, we, the teams can collate the information and show where the, where the process is. Uh, Chair, if adding the new ones and the old ones that have been referred before, we are now talking about 88 uh, state officials uh, that, uh, have been referred for disciplinary action. And as we said, we would like to ensure that uh, all of these, all of these uh, uh, referrals are actioned. Chair, uh, on the slide 46 and 47, slide 46 and 47, there are about 44, 44 referrals. Uh, that we have been made, that we have made uh, for prosecution. Uh, Chair, again, similarly, we provide a progress update, but our officials uh, and the leadership at NPA, uh, while we one way or another give an update, uh, that the preference is for the NPA to give update themselves. So Chair, in this regard, we can really report that uh, the new matters that have been referred to the NPA total up to 44, uh, and the previous ones were 38, and that's on slide 48 and 49. So the total number of cases that have been referred for consideration by the NPA uh, counts up to 102. And you'll see, say, Chair, uh, we give a date of the referral, the level of the officials, or the entities that have been referred. So as I said, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the, the NPA would, at an, at an appropriate time, probably give, uh, give an update uh, on these matters to the Honorable Committee. Slide number 50 deals with the referrals made for executive action. This, uh, this relates to 
the executive authorities that we have found uh, that the, the, the evidence indicated that they've been found wanting in their oversight responsibilities. Uh, as I indicated, uh, the, it, it indicated new referral because, for, because of the reporting period, but uh, already it's, it's been referred and we are pleased that uh, the Premier of the Eastern Cape has already acted on this referral. This on slide 50 relates to the um, former MEC of Health in the Eastern Cape. Uh, slide 51, these ones uh, were reported to the Honorable Committee already. Uh, this was the former MEC of Health in Houten and the office bearer uh, in the JB Max local uh, municipality. Uh, and uh, we, are, we, are, we are really glad in this case that uh, all of the actions uh, have, been, have been implemented. On the JB Max one, uh, we indicated that uh, uh, the SIU uh, was in contact with the MEC of Coxter. Uh, we are pleased that uh, uh, in that regard, also actions uh, have been uh, taken uh, uh, to date. Uh, but uh, the, the, the progress there also indicates that the office bearer has since resigned from the, from the municipality. Um, right, Chair, th th that deals with, the, deals with the referrals of the executive authorities. The investigations in various provinces are still ongoing. And Chair, uh, given the ruling that SIU obtained from the special tribunal uh, relating to the executive authority, we will test in each and every investigation, we will test the responsibility and the oversight of executive authorities and the investigating teams are aware of, uh, of, of that. So we would like to be uh, a consistent, even-handed and, and ensure that we hold everyone accountable in the same manner across all provinces. Uh, now, the, the next slide, honorable chair and honorable members, deals uh, slide number 52, 53, uh, and 50, up to 54, no, 50, 52 and 53. This one deals with the topic that we have indicated to the, to the honorable committee, that uh, we are also ensuring that the service providers that evidence has pointed that they are also included and involved and implicated in the wrongdoing should not just be left alone over and above the civil litigation process that we take to recover the monies from them, whether to refer them to the criminal prosecution, we will also want to make sure that they are uh, blacklisted. Uh, and the word blacklist, of course, relates to an administrative action that is taken to ensure that this civil, uh, this the uh, uh, service providers are restrained from doing business with government. Right. So if I start off uh, without really going into much detail on, in Houten, uh, we have referred about eighteen. 18 service providers. I indicated earlier on that we do interact with the competition commission. In this case, uh, uh, we have found evidence indicating to the contravention of the competition, uh, competition act. So we have referred those matters to the competition commission. Now, the competition, uh, the commissioner has confirmed the receipt of these referrals and will follow through on, on how they, they deal with, with, with those matters. Uh, in Gauteng, still two service providers where we have found the evidence of fraud. In this case, we have then referred the matters uh, for blacklisting, but over and above, they would have been referred as part of the NPA referrals. Uh, the Department of Gauteng still, uh, 
we have referred uh, two service providers, evidence pointing to the commission of alleged criminal offense. We have referred them for, for blacklisting and over and above the, the referrals for, for criminal prosecution. In Gauteng, additional seven, seven uh, uh, service providers have been referred for blacklisting. Slide 53, again in, uh, in, uh, in Gauteng, 10 service providers have been referred. In this case, Chair, our investigators also looked at whether there has been contravention of the, of the uh, Medicines and Related Substances Act under the auspices of uh, the South African Health Product Regulatory Authority. So we found evidence that points to the contravention of that legislation. And we have referred all those uh, to, the, to, to SAPRA. Uh, the evidence really uh, indicated that the service providers, uh, this is on the progress to date, I'm reading at the bottom of that paragraph. The evidence indicated that the service providers were not registered with or licensed by the SAPRA to distribute medical services in circumstances where one or more of the PPE uh, were distributed. Uh, Chair, we expect again that uh, these matters would be dealt with uh, appropriately. In city of Johannesburg, four service providers referred to the Competition Commission in the South African National Defense Force. Uh, two service providers referred to the Competition Commission. At Equini, seven, seven, uh, seven uh, service providers referred to SAPRA. Watukuza Local Municipality, two service providers referred to SAPRA. In the Limpopo, or Limpopo Cocta and Limpopo Department of Health, uh, collectively about 33 service providers have been referred. Uh, they would have been referred to various uh, uh, regulatory authorities. But Chair, this uh, blacklisting process is an administrative process, which is the responsibility of the accounting authority or accounting officer, because these uh, service providers were providing, were providing service to the state institution. We will assist in our process with the evidence that we have found so that the process is concluded until the end where the service providers are blacklisted. We're talking about the total of 87 service providers, uh, honorable members. Um, the next slide, honorable chair, deals with the value of new potential cash and or assets to be recovered. Uh, as we reported before, that uh, these are the uh, recoveries where we have, number one, either stopped the payment or uh, there has been acknowledgement of debts that have been signed. Uh, and, and, and again, uh, those acknowledgement of debts do not exonerate the service providers from further uh, uh, damage suit or criminal or criminal proceedings. Um, uh, Chair, that uh, in, in the interest of time, uh, I would like really just to indicate that uh, we're dealing here uh, with a total of about two hundred and thirty million. That is that is a potentially recoverable. So we will ensure that the processes are followed, uh, like. Just high level in the Eastern Cape, uh, there, there we, we, we said we have stopped the payment. Uh, we finalized the matter, there's the matter of FAPCOM. The, 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 the payment was never made. So, so in this one, we will tick it. And uh, when we report next time, we will report it in the actual recoveries appropriately. In the Eastern Cape still, we successfully uh, applied for the special tribunal to have the bank accounts of the four respondents frozen. We will monitor all of these uh, uh, orders that have been given and report appropriately whether they have been paid uh, when we report on the actual recoveries. All of these proceed to slide number 55. Uh, uh, in the description column, 
we have indicated specifically the circumstances under which we have either stopped payment or we have reached the acknowledgement of debt and we've included the values. As I said, the amounts translate to about 230, 230 million. And these are new potential cash or assets to be recovered. We have, re we have reported before uh, on this uh, uh, potential recoveries. Uh, on slide number 56, uh, we have uh, mentioned those rand value of potential cash recoveries as we reported when we, when we appeared to Scopa before. Uh, and those ones uh, totaled up to about 147 million. Uh, so Chair, as we say, uh, we will continue to just indicate uh, from potential to actual, uh, uh, and then indicate clearly to the to the honorable committee uh, around uh, around that process now the the new actual cash or assets recovered on slide number 57 uh, this is as i would say this is really money in the bank once all the processes have been followed to date the actual amount counts up to 3.1 million and if you add on the one that was reported before, which is 25.3 million uh, on slide number 58, uh, it counts up to 28 million point four. So I need to pause here and say, uh, we, we would like to ensure that this figure, particularly around the orders that have been granted, that the execution of those orders is speedily actioned, so that we can translate the orders into actual money uh, that goes back to the state. And this actual recoveries would then see uh, the amounts increasing. Uh, so it is very important that our legal team uh, executes on the orders uh, that, have been, uh, that have been given. Slide number, slide number 59, honorable chair, uh, deals with the potential loss uh, prevented. Uh, in the Houghton Department of Health, this is the new one. Uh, as I indicated, there's a loss prevention there of about uh, 90,000 rands and another one of uh, 300,000. Uh, all of this, uh, the first one recommended to Houghton that they should reduce the value of two outstanding invoices. Look, our team, as they investigate, they also analyze the payment, uh, payment information. And in this case, you would find that the, the, the team has found that uh, you know, there has been you know, uh, uh, over, over, over pricing on the, on the invoices or over invoicing, so to speak. And, and then uh, they would uh, recommend to the department that uh, the, invoicing be, the invoice be challenged and be, be, be reduced. Uh, there's also another Department of Health in Houghton, where about 300,000 SIU re recommended that uh, payments not be made to uh, prime resin because the investigation found the appointment was irregular. In this case, as we said before, uh, we would then couple the stopping of the payment with the institution of civil proceedings in the special tribunal. Uh, on slide number 60, I've already uh, reported on this one, and uh, we reported it before, that uh, in the Houting Department of Health, when the contract was set aside to the value of 139 million, uh, about 99 million of that had not been paid yet. So that part ensured that we saved uh, the department 99, uh, 99 million. Um, Chair, the rent value of contract uh, set aside. Uh, this one's we reported, uh, uh, we've already really indicated before, is the one in Houting, 139 million set aside. Um, Chair, at this stage, uh, I would like to just indicate that we are now moving on to some of the details of the 
matters that has been finalized. And Chair, uh, uh, under your guidance, I will go through them in detail, uh, uh, but uh, uh, in some instances, not really read line by line, so that uh, the, the committee, honorable committee could really get a sense of what we are reporting. Uh, what we are reporting uh, on slide 63, uh, we're just repeating that it's in line with the summary progress that we presented above. Uh, some of these matters, if you look at the bottom, we will indicate matters which have been finalized where no irregularities have been found. Uh, and those matters, uh, it's about 588 service providers uh, and translating to about 3.9 billion. We, where we have found irregularities, uh, those translate to about 247 service providers, 352 contracts, and the, the value is about 1.7 billion. So Chair, uh, I'm gonna now go into some uh, fair detail uh, on all of these, on, on all of the matters, uh, without of course really reading line by line. Uh, I'll ensure that uh, I, I move with a bit of speed. Uh, so that now we can really allow the Honorable Committee to engage and ask questions. I'll start off with the Gauteng province, slide number 64. Uh, in, the, in the Department of Health, uh, we, uh, there's some investigations that have already been uh, done uh, in terms of all of those uh, uh, allegations that were received relating to all of those matters, cloth masks, thermometers, accommodation, radio advertising. Uh, and in all of these matters, these are those that were, we have not found uh, uh, irregularities. Uh, and uh, the Houghton team has done uh, really a, a good work in terms of really checking against the irregularities and the allegations that have been reported. Still Houghton department, slide number 65, uh, as you can see there, uh, uh, the first six on that slide uh, where no irregularities have been found uh, relating to surface disinfectant, cleaning services and body bags, empty spray bottles uh, and three mm. plight cloth masks and so on. So there the, the investigation reveals no irregularities. You on, the, on the, yes. That's fine. Um, I think where no irregularities have been identified, uh, as is with the previous slide and this one, in any coming ones, we can take those as read. Okay. Uh, to say where <clears throat> the last two bullet points on these, you can flag those because if they yes. fall outside the presentation, we'd have to note those. So we can That's right. proceed. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> as you correctly note, Chair, uh, uh, on the last two bullet points, we'll continue to follow that uh, because they really fell outside of the of the scope. Uh, in the in the Gauteng, still in Gauteng, uh, the cleaning services, the procurement process was concluded again before the national state of depart of, of uh, disaster was declared. Uh, that's the that's the matter where it fell outside the ambit. Uh, however, uh, we referred uh, them back to the Department of uh, of Health. Now, in the South African police service, uh, we received allegations from a whistleblower, uh, again, uh, relating to about 36 million of the contract to supply PPEs. Uh, we found as, uh, after the investigation that the prices and the total cost of procurement was in line with the national treasury guideline and directives of the allegations that were unfounded. Chair, there's another Matter and our national, our chief national investigating officer can update the committee probably at the end uh, about uh, other PPE investigations that are uh, conducted by the Hawks. Of course, we wouldn't want to make a report on behalf of the Hawks, but uh, the Hawks is also looking at some of the uh, uh, the PPE uh, irregularities uh, in the in, in the SAPS. Um, the, the, in the city of Swanee, the SIU then received allegations around PPE contracts 
uh, the value was 96 million. Uh, we found that uh, no contract has been awarded in this case, and the so-called official was not employed by the, by the municipality. In the city of Tuani, uh, the, the next slide number 67, please. Uh, the, the allegations were that the municipality and the housing development, social development opened seven homeless shelters at the Caledon Stadium and were also provided daily meals uh, to the homeless. In these uh, uh, allegations, about 37 contracts, again, the team did an investigation and found no, pro no procurement for process was followed, but however, no payments have been made. Disciplinary action was recommended uh, against two officials and the state attorney has been briefed to appoint counsel to declare a contract uh, irregular. On the city of, of Johannesburg, uh, the Johannesburg city property that is, uh, the allegations again re related to, to uh, uh, impropriety on the irregularities of procurement. Four service providers were appointed with contract of 18.6 million we found irregularities in this case. Disciplinary action and criminal action were recommended against five officials. A referral was made to the Competition Commission for excessive pricing of the state and the state attorney uh, has been requested to brief counsel to set the contract aside and to recover. On the National Department of Transport, uh, we received allegations pertaining to procurement of PPE, Four service providers uh, uh, were awarded contract to the value of 343,000. The investigations found that all the items uh, procured were in line with the N uh, national treasury instructions, so the allegations could not be substanti substantiated. Uh, the National Department of Education, uh, we received allegations that the department had outsourced the SCM process uh, of the provisions of water tanks to the schools to uh, uh, to rent water. Uh, the investigation in this, uh, in, in this has been concluded uh, on some of the service providers. Uh, the water tanks were procured uh, in KZN, Free State, and so on. Of the 147, 120 orders were issued. Uh, in, on the 27 service providers, we finalized because they did not provide any services to rent water. So, so that's, the, that's the one part. But the 94 service providers uh, were also finalized as no uh, SEM irregularities were found. We are still going on on the 26th service, service providers. The National Department of Correctional Services, as we indicated before, uh, we found irregularities and the disciplinary actions were recommended against the four officials. Uh, National Health Laboratory Services, uh, the SIU received allegations that 72 million tender was awarded. The SIU investigations found that the award was unlawful. As we indicated in the outcomes there, that uh, we appointed council to review the decisions and to set the contract aside. The Department of Public Works and Infrastructure in the Eastern Cape, uh, we received allegations in respect of a tender for emergency repairs uh, at the Aberdeen Hospital, the SIU, we found no irregularities in this case, uh, honorable chair and honorable members. Um, uh, and also bullet number two and number three, uh, all of those uh, allegations in the Amatole San Bisho, uh, where the tender for clear view fencing and uh, the emergency refurbishment of public hospitals, the team in the Eastern Cape done the investigations and they have found no irregularities in this case. Uh, this, the next slide as well is slide number 71. You'll see there that again, the, depart the, the, the team in the Eastern Cape still in the Department of Health relating to you know, the two service providers for uh, uh, sanitizers. And the, but there was also an indication that the service provider was non-compliant with the tax clearance certificate, except for that, which there's the certificate which was expired. Except for that, the department had made no payments and therefore suffered no loss. Uh, so uh, in bullet point two and bullet point three, there was also 
no payments, no payments made. Uh, there was no award made and uh, found no SCM irregularities. In the Eastern Cape Department of Health, uh, uh, two service providers were approved to supply uh, 338, uh, isolate, 338,000 uh, isolation gowns to the value of 342 million. Uh, uh, the SIU found no SCM irregularities. Uh, similar to bullet point two, three, and four, uh, uh, after the investigations were conducted, uh, there were no irregularities found, and the department suffered no loss in some of those findings. In Eastern Cape, again, Department of Health, slide number 73, uh, as we reported in some of the uh, investigations in the Department of Health, SIU was informed that an official uh, had unlawfully and falsely drafted a fraudulent commitment letter. So this is an official who, who just you know, initiates a commitment letter and fraudulently drafts that. And we found that uh, the letter was forged uh, and the matter was referred to NPA uh, for further investigation. The matter is currently being dealt with with the Office of the Director of the Public uh, prosecutions in Umtata. Department of Education still, uh, the SIU received allegation that an official at the department were used her sister's company to obtain a contract for the supply of PPE uh, in the Eastern Cape to the value of 2.8 million. The SIU found that the official did use both companies to secure this PPE contract. So there were irregularities and also there's uh, there's fraud and there's corruption. Uh, so the disciplinary action was referred and the SIU uh, applied for and obtained an order in the special tribunal to freeze all monies in the bank accounts of the service providers. Uh, the next slide, Chair. Um, uh, the Department of Education still in the Eastern Cape. The SIU received an allegation that an official at the department used his wife as company to obtain a contract for the supply of PPE. The official declared that he was not directly involved in his wife's business, um, uh, but the SIU, after investigation, we found evidence that contradicted this official uh, statements, that he solicited bribes and kickbacks from other companies that had been awarded contracts. So in this case, we found irregularity, criminal offense, and we found there's, there's corruption uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in, in this case. The, the bullet point two and three, we, we did not find uh, irregularities. Still in the Eastern Cape, Department of Education, uh, on bullet points, uh, bullet point number one, uh, uh, the SIU received allegation that service provider who received the contract to deliver PPE to 25 schools uh, to the value of 2.4, in fact, did not deliver. Our investigation found the actually as per delivery note, they were delivered. Uh, and this was confirmed by the school principals. So the allegation was not uh, uh, substantiated. The next one, we found irregularities. The SSIU received allegations that the department irregularly made use of COVID-19 em emergency procurement. So we found that uh, they've, they, they've wrongfully used uh, the emergency procurement. Uh, the investigation found that the department, uh, we used the word in bracket, hijacked the emergency procurement. We found that an official was the sister of the owner of the company that was awarded the contract. Um, so Chair, there's corruption here, and the, we, have sub, we have applied to the special tribunal to have the bank accounts of the four respondents frozen and interdict the, the department from paying, and we are seeking to recover. Still in the Eastern Cape, uh, uh, the SIU received allegations of procurement irregular impact of temporary housing structures. We found uh, uh, that the emergency procurement process was used to motivate for the structures. However, only 279 of the 1,800 temporary shelters were eventually built. So Chair, we have found irregularity here. 
and we have found under delivery. Uh, so as a result, the SIU will institute civil proceedings uh, to recover and will also issue uh, the criminal referrals and the, and the civil recovery. In the South African uh, Social Services uh, Agency, and again, I'm informed that uh, there's an update that the Honorable Committee needed to know about some aspect of the allegations in the uh, in the in the SASA in the social in the South African Social Agency. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Lacheto, will will give an update on that. Uh, those uh, those recent allegations that we received. Uh, but on, on this one, where we received allegations relating to irregular procurement of food parcels, uh, the appointment of the two service providers was done in contravention of uh, the section 217. So we found irregularities uh, in, this, in this case, and we will institute civil proceedings. In the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan Municipality, uh, there were allegations relating to the procurement of 1,000 infrared non-contact non -contact thermometers, masks, and uh, uh, in this case, we did not find uh, irregularities. The allegations were unsubstantiated. In the free state, uh, uh, in the provincial treasury, uh, the SIU received uh, an allegation that a company receives contracts to supply PPEs to the value of 4.9 million. It was alleged that the, uh, the SEM process was not followed and the company received two contracts to the value of 11 million. Our investigations found that the process was irregular and that an official of the provincial treasury uh, may have committed fraud. So we found uh, irregularity. We are, dis we are referring for disciplinary action. We are also referring uh, for the for the uh, prosecution, it would be in, in included in some of those referrals to NPA, and we we are now uh, going to the special tribunal to uh, recover. Still in the provincial treasure of the free state, we received allegation that service providers who were awarded contract to supply surgical gowns, that about thirty service providers were appointed to the value of thirty nine million. We reported before on that one on the uh, potential recoveries. This is where we stopped payment, and we are at the special tribunal where we've interdicted the, the provincial treasury to pay uh, from making further payments. Uh, still in the free state, uh, slide number 79, uh, we received an allegation that a company received contract to supply sanitizers. In this case, we found no irregularities even on the second bullet point where there were allegations of 4.7 million relating to a uh, famous uh, radio personality, we found no evidence of irregularities. Slide number 18, still in the free state, uh, we found irregularities where allegations were received that the company was appointed irregularly to construct temporary shelters. The SIU found irregularities in, the, in respect of the SCM process, no approval was obtained uh, to deviate from the normal SCM process. We have appointed the state attorney to brief counsel and we will be recovering. The Lijoliputa municipality, there were uh, allegations there around nepotism because contracts were awarded to a provider who was a family member. After the investigations, we found that the allegations were not substantiated. In KwaZulu Natal, uh, Chair, in all of those uh, uh, investigations that are on the slide, allegations, allegations relating from the information contained from the AG's report, uh, we found that the allegations erroneous, erroneously attributed responsibility to the KZN Department of Public Works and were found to be incorrect. At the office of the Premier, we received allegations that senior officials were involved. The SIU has not been able to contact the whistleblower in this regard. But in this case, uh, honorable members, uh, the matter, although it, it may appear as closed, uh, because some of the whistleblowers really do not provide contact details, so we, we, we struggle to reach out to them. 
but we put it uh, in a in a, in a area where if further information is obtained, we should be able to reopen this matter. The last bullet point, we found no irregularities where allegations were relating to eight, eight contractors to the value of 1.1 million were awarded for PPE and for infrastructure contracts. Still in the Department of KwaZulu uh, Natal, Department of Education, 30 contracts were awarded to the value of 322 uh, million. We found SCM irregularities. And in this case, as we reported above, we found uh, cover coating. Service providers did not declare that they had worked for the state institutions in the past 12 months. This is a failure to disclose. Non-essential items were procured. Fraud was uncovered. Non-compliance with the VAT Act and under delivery. And we have, of course, uh, confronted the service providers where an acknowledgement of debt was signed to the tune of 3.5 million. We ensure that the department is uh, cited and they are aware. We ensure that there's no further prejudice, but again, uh, this does not exonerate the service providers from further actions. Still in the KwaZulu Natal, uh, on this uh, Department of Transport, still where we received allegations that the department had procured PPE at inflated prices, two contracts being awarded for 22.4 million. We found no irregularities there. Uh, uh, in the next one, we found no irregularities relating to the supply. However, uh, uh, we, a systemic recommendation was made to the municipality to ensure that SAPRA compliance for future contracts uh, are referrals. In this case, we found that the, the service provider who provided medical equipment was not registered on SAPRA. So, Chair, uh, that in itself actually renders the process uh, to be to be irregular, because uh, the, that the, the, the SCM process should have checked that part. Uh, I've, I've made a note of this, uh, where we will we will engage with our team to ensure that uh, appropriate action is uh, is taken. The Etequini Metropolitan, we received allegations that the municipality had provided catering for homeless between March and July 2020 without complying with national treasury benchmark rates. Uh, we found in this regard that no payments have been made and therefore there, were, there was no loss by the department, by the municipality. Umgeni uh, municipality still in KZN, we received allegations here uh, that uh, the municipality may have used the MIG, the Municipal Infrastructure Grant Funds. Uh, we found indeed that the allegations were substantiated. Uh, the 15 contracts were awarded to the value of 9.6 million. So we found that the, M the MIG funding was used in this case. So this is clearly a misuse of MIG funding. Uh, there, would, there, there, are, there are processes in the accounting processes where funds earmarked for, uh, for, for MIG would be used for other purposes. That was not followed in this regard and we found irregularities. In the Limpopo province, uh, slide number 85, SIU received allegations that the Department, the Department of Health had uh, underpaid the service provider. Two service providers were appointed to supply the cloth marks. We found that the department had paid for what was delivered, no irregularities. In Mpumalanga, uh, slide number 86, the Department of Cooperative Governance, we found irregularities there based on the allegations from a media report in respect of irregular procurements and contracting for the supply of PPE. Our investigation found that the SCM process was not competitive. The contract was also awarded to, to the brother of an official who was part of the bid adjudication. This is clear conflict of interest, which was not disclosed and the disciplinary action and criminal action was recommended. We'll also uh, institute civil 
proceedings to recover. In the office of the premier and the next bullet point in the Department of Agriculture, we found that the, the allegations were not substantiated. Still in the, in, the, in the Mpumalanga province, Department of Education, uh, here, Chair, with, uh, the 249 schools were identified for maintenance in respect of water and sanitation. Right? We received allegations that some of the service provider has not rendered services. So in this case, we found that there's negligence. And the negligence was more on the part of the project managers of the department. Uh, in fact, they were responsible for signing off on the certificates uh, after verification uh, of, the, of, of the service delivery. So uh, the investigation team found that uh, 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 these project managers uh, uh, were, were, were negligent uh, and the disciplinary action had been recommended against the 11 project managers. The next one, uh, the SIU received an allegation that a service provider had supplied the PPE to the value of 138,000. Uh, in fact, here, with the SIU investigation found that the PPE had been donated to the department by the service provider and that the department should not have made a payment. Uh, the service provider has since refunded uh, the department. The full amount was paid. Mpumalanga province, uh, we've already reported on the Mpumalanga Economic Growth Agency when we covered the outcomes. Uh, this was uh, coming from the media reports in respect of irregular procurement, but in this case we found no irregularities, the allegations were not substantiated. Uh, further, the allegations made emanate from media reports. The service providers received contracts to the value of 403,000. We found that the PPE had been procured at inflated prices and some of the items purchased were not classified as PPE. We will, we will uh, then institute the necessary referrals and the and the recoveries. Still in Mpumalanga, the Department of Community Safety and uh, Security and Liaison, we found irregularities chair in this case. Uh, we found that no SCM process was followed where the contract of 1.4 million was awarded. A criminal action has been recommended against the director of the service provider and will also uh, uh, refer uh, to, the, to the department uh, for disciplinary processes. Uh, Department of Health still, uh, the SIU found that SCM process was irregular. This is after a desktop analysis was identified relating to the expenditure of uh, PPE related goods to the amount of 18.6 million. The goods were de delivered before purchase orders were issued and documents had to be backdated. So in this case, the department did not receive value for money uh, and the markup on some of the items sold was about 106%. Disciplinary action against the official was recommended. We will also take uh, other appropriate steps to recover and the criminal referrals. In the Department of Social Development, still in Mpumalanga, uh, we found no irregularities on the first bullet point. Uh, where we received allegations that various service providers had been awarded contracts to provide food parcels. We found no irregularities in respect of SEM process and all the beneficiaries confirmed that they had received the food parcels. Uh, the next one, we received allegations that a service provider who had provided hygiene services was irregularly awarded. We found that the SEM process was not fair, equitable, uh, competitive and cost effective, therefore irregular, and the service provider overcharged the department. We will recommend civil proceedings to recover an overpayment of about 904,000. Uh, the Department of Culture, Sports and Recreation in, in Pumalanga, uh, uh, we received allegations that uh, the PPE prices were inflated. We found that indeed that they've been procured at inflated prices we will recommend uh, for the recovery. Uh, so on the next one, the allegations came from the media, which reported on discrepancies relating to expenditure uh, and pricing of COVID-19 
in the pricing of fumigation services conducted in various libraries where above the prescribed amount. It's very interesting in this one, honorable chair, it finds some similarities with the Department of Education in Gauteng, where the, the square meterages were not considered or will, were ill uh, calculated. In this case, we found that the libraries were all supposed to measure 840 square meters, but some of them were smaller. So Chair, our investigating teams, they go to that detail where they measure uh, the, 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 the space or the square meterage where the department was supposed to be paid. SIU actually measured and checked the accuracy and found that uh, it was not accurate. We will recommend that civil proceedings be instituted to recover the losses suffered. In the Northern Cape, slide number 92, uh, we found no irregularities here, Chair. Uh, uh, where we received allegations that an official from the Department of uh, Health received PPE tenders from the municipality. Slide number 93, uh, we left with six slides, Chair. Uh, and thank you really for uh, giving us the time to go through it, the, the presentation. In the Northwest, uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this slide, we received allegations that uh, various providers had irregularly appointed to, to provide PPE. 21 service providers were awarded contract to the value of 30 million. We found no irregularities and the allegations were not substantiated. The next bullet point, uh, we conducted high level review of the appointment of all service providers conducted by the department. Two of the focus areas in this review were the prices charged by the service providers in, com in comparison with the guidance by the National Treasury. Our investigation found that service providers had inflated prices of the PPE and service providers may have also transgressed the, the taxation laws. We've already reported above that uh, some of them uh, have signed the AODs, uh, but we have also uh, instituted civil, civil process. Department of Education, in the first bullet point we found uh, irregularities relating to allegations of the service provider who was irregularly appointed. They had inflated the prices. We have now referred to disciplinary process and we have uh, also instituted civil, civil proceedings. In the next bullet point, uh, we've also found irregularities uh, on allegations in respect of procurement of masks for staff and learners in the province. Uh, we have also found the contract of the value was 9 million. We found that the informal committee was established to manage the procurement PPE. However, the committee may have committed financial misconduct because they failed to ensure that the SCM process was followed. Disciplinary action will be uh, recommended. It would be some of those disciplinary processes that we referred to above and the civil litigation will be instituted. In the Department of Education, the first bullet point we found no irregularities uh, in, the, in, the, in the process. So the, the, the allegations were not substantiated. Uh, on the third bullet point, uh, slide 95, we found irregularities in the JB Max. The SIU received an allegation that a service provider was irregularly appointed. We found irregularities in respect of the SEM process. Again, we are referring disciplinary process uh, submitted to the municipality. In the Moses Kotani, uh, we found no irregularities there uh, uh, in respect of the SCM process and all contracts were in line with the municipality's SCM process. Now, this, the next matter, um, I think this is the matter where the administrator is, is, informed, is involved and uh, involved in the sense that he's in charge. But uh, the, the, uh, the MM or the, uh, the municipality uh, manager there has, has challenged some of the legal arrangements. We received an allegation here that the official was abusing petrol cars uh, and that they would care up to 5,000 for a local trip. That is not even 60 kilometers uh, um, in length. 
The investigation team met with the hawks regarding this allegation has received all documents. However, as I said, the municipality has confirmed that the allegations relate to COVID-19 in, uh, expenditure. The, the administrator undertook with additional documentation uh, to, give, to be given to the, to the SIU. Now, as at the 31st of March, the administrator had not provided the, the, uh, the documentation. These matter will be reopened uh, once the documentation are, uh, are available. Um, but I'll, as I indicated, uh, we will then uh, instate uh, uh, refer to the team so that this matter is, uh, is reopened at an appropriate time. In the Western Cape chair, uh, without really uh, taking too much time, all of the, all of the allegations, and, and again, chair, uh, our Western Cape team is in attendance, but I've also satisfied myself as they do the investigation uh, that uh, uh, the allegations that have been received in the, uh, again, it's, 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 this is probably uh, an error which we apologize for and will correct. There is no National Department of Environmental and Fishery in the, in the Western Cape. Uh, uh, but in this case, uh, in the, uh, this relates to the National Department, which is really not in the Eastern Cape, but uh, this is the footprint. This, this happened in the Western Cape, but it's in the auspices of the National Department. Uh, hence, the National, hence the Western Cape team would have made uh, this error, but we apologize, we'll, we'll correct that. We received allegation that a service provider supplied to the department the, uh, the bottles under the false uh, forged or cloned label. But we found no irregularities that, and they were not substantiated. Again, in the Department of Education, Department of Transport, up to the up to the end of uh, slide number ninety-eight, chair, uh, the investigating team uh, found that uh, there were no irregularities, and the, the the allegations were not substantiated. We conclude the presentation with the estimated costs. Uh, and there, uh, Honorable Chair, is really just to indicate uh, that uh, we are still uh, ensuring that uh, we are well resourced as we as we investigate, uh, and we are saying there that the current estimated cost of SIU investigation to the end of August, uh, uh, which includes the current investigations and those yet to commence, is estimated at about 182 million. This figure excludes an estimated, an estimate of about 85 million for additional or short-term contracts. Uh, Chair, what we are really saying at the end is that uh, we have seen a reduction of SIU estimated costs of, in, of internal resources by about 12 million and the reduction in estimated cost of experts sourced through SIU SCM by about 33 million. The initial estimates that we gave before were provided based on projections by the SIU teams. And as the investigations progressed, the actual costs have now become less than what was projected. So we are at this stage, honorable chair and honorable members satisfied with the resources uh, that they would support the investigations as expected. Honorable chair, I would like to really thank Thank the Honorable Chair and the Honorable Committee uh, for allowing us to present as detailed as we did. Uh, it was important that we show actually the status of where the investigations are and account to this Honorable Committee uh, on the investigations and the outcomes and who really needs to be held to account. We are thankful, Chair, and thank you very much. Uh, I'll pause here. As I indicated, my colleagues from various provinces are in attendance. When the questions are raised, uh, they would also assist in taking questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Head of Unit, um, for that. Um, I hope I'm audible. I've had to change devices, colleagues, because of load shedding. Um, so, uh, HOU, thank you very much for that very comprehensive presentation uh, which you have given us, um, noting uh, the extent of the work which you 
um, have been doing and the very gloomy picture it paints not so far as your own competence is concerned but by about just how daring uh, and bold the corrupt elements may be across the spectrum of governance whether it's at provincial level or municipal level and that on its own um, should be worrying the fact that your costs to do this will be 182 million is precisely what has always been of concern to us uh, that it costs money to recover money um, the good work that you do um, is not uh, uh, the, the public um, who have been looted so we are um, almost used a very wrong word but I wanted to say we were screwed over twice um, because of this, and so this is precisely why um, the, the 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 work of fighting corruption, whilst necessary, it 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 is in itself uh, is a costly exercise. So, but thank you very much, so you um, for um, that uh, work. But I just think because there was a correspondence or notification sent yesterday, and I know the matter will be raised before we ask questions. If yeah. we can dispense with that matter now, yes. on the Minister of Health and the Department of Health, insofar as Digital Vibes is concerned, okay. uh, I know that in the communication, we, that in the, there's a discussion we had, but I think that um, let's let, let's bring that one to the fore as well. And then, uh, colleagues, we will come to uh, you as well, if you can indicate in the group. I don't know where we start and where we end, because... It's a very comprehensive uh, presentation uh, that we have received. But um, HOU, let's dispense with that matter um, regarding the Minister of Health and Digital Vibes and the Department of Health. No, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair, uh, for that. Uh, we will also, also just cover uh, the, the update. I was informed uh, from the meeting yesterday that the scope of all scope uh, the honorable committee also needed an update <clears throat> of where we are with the department of uh, education in Gauteng. Chair, on the on the national department of health uh, i need to just indicate that uh, the investigation is ongoing and we went public uh, to say the investigation is at an advanced stage and what do you really mean by that? Uh, uh, Chair, our investigators have been going through the procurement process that was uh, conducted in the department. They have gone through, uh, of course, all the prescripts. Uh, and to date, uh, we can report that, uh, and this the department has already uh, sort of announced themselves that uh, the procurement process uh, uh, is been found to be irregular. Uh, the investigation is still uh, ongoing uh, in respect of other aspects of the, of the investigation. Uh, we have determined the accountability levels of who was involved in the actual procurement process. And those referrals will be made uh, uh, to, the, to the department. We, we will also uh, look at the various allegations that are made in respect of the uh, other officials in the department, including the executive authority in the department and the service provider uh, that has been uh, that has been identified digital vibes so at this stage um, i'm really constrained to go into detail and we are investigating all of those allegations and the investigations is progressing well uh, the minister has expressed his cooperation, and the investigating team at the moment is still following some of the uh, 
uh, legal provisions in the SIU Act where they would call various witnesses to be interviewed under oath. Uh, so at this stage, we are at a critical stage of the investigation and we would not at this stage really like to go into detail as that would have the potential to prejudice uh, the investigation. Um, but I think it's important to indicate to the, uh, to the honorable uh, committee that uh, we envisage, we envisage, uh, although the overall investigations into the PPE would be ended by August, but this investigation, we really would like to conclude it by the end of June. Uh, but of course, we continue to get you know, information that comes through, uh, uh, through whistleblowers, through other means, and the investigating team is enjoined, it's duty bound to look into that, uh, uh, those allegations and make an appropriate pronouncement. So honorable chair at this stage, uh, that's really uh, the indication of what we can give to the honorable committee. We are investigating all of these allegations, gathering evidence as required so that we can reach an appropriate finding uh, come, come the end of June. If it happens before the end of June, we will ensure that uh, uh, the report uh, is prepared, handed to the president as expected. And of course, the honorable committee would also uh, know that we have concluded uh, the, the investigation. Um, on the on the Houghton Department of Health one, uh, again, the, the investigation is ongoing. Uh, the investigating team uh, has given a progress update uh, similar to the investigating team in the National Department of Health. Uh, this investigation involves a number of, uh, of uh, civil of, of service providers. Uh, about uh, the department spent 431 million on decontamination and used about 269 suppliers throughout the province. So the investigation has to look at all those uh, procurement processes. But at this stage, uh, we can report that uh, the supply chain management process, that is the procurement process itself, uh, has been concluded uh, to make a finding that uh, the procurement process uh, has been irregular. But of course, we need to deep, dive deep and determine the accountability so that we can make appropriate referrals for consequence management. And this would include now, amongst others, continuing with the interviews of all the officials, including the executive authority in this regard. Uh, and we aim to ensure that all of those uh, are conducted and uh, completed. The investigating team indicates to me that this uh, is aimed to be overall concluded, like with the others, by the end of August. But I've urged them that they should you know, fast track so that we can bring out some of the uh, findings, uh, at least by the end of June. Uh, uh, just like with the National Department of Health, we've lined up the interviews, which would include the interview with the uh, with the executive authority, uh, so that uh, we come we come to, to to a conclusion that is credible based on the evidence that we would have collected, both on all the witnesses, including that of the executive authority. But at this stage, Chair, um, uh, I'm pleased to report, and this the committee may have uh, picked up in the media, on the 24th of February, the SIU registered the investigation with the Fusion Hub to assist with bank accounts and profiling of service providers. We decided to prioritize the top 40 service providers that received the most payments 
14 bank accounts with an amount of 40.7 million have been frozen by the special tribunal on the 17th of May, 2021. We have briefed council to review and set aside the appointments of this, uh, of this uh, uh, service, service providers. Uh, so that, that relates to the uh, procurement process that has really to date been found uh, to, be, to be irregular. Uh, again, we will make appropriate referrals following the investigation that is, that is ongoing. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, that's really the best that, uh, that we, at this stage, uh, noting that the investigation is still ongoing, that we can report as an, as an update uh, to, the, to the Honorable uh, Committee. Chair, again, I, I was informed that uh, uh, the committee needed an update on SASA, uh, and then uh, uh, the, the, our national uh, investigating officer, is ready to give a, to give an update on that one. Thanks. What? No, that's fine. I will speak it to you. Let's get that um, brief one. Uh, thank you, HOU. Thank you, Honorable Chair, and thank you, Honorable Member. With regard to update on SASA, as indicated yesterday, that we need to brief the committee. Uh, I can indicate that we during the during this week we engage with SASA regarding the matter that was raised in Eastern Cape. And as a result, we agreed that we will second SAU member so that they can uh, quickly do investigation pertaining to that matter that has been raised. Uh, we have sent a comment agreement to SASA and they've responded with their comment. And currently our legals are looking at the comment agreement. And in the meantime, the team is engaging with the SASA official in the province, the team that we have identified in order to, for them to be seconded. So we can easily indicate that uh, the SIU will be attending to this matter in terms of secondment so that we can able to assist SASA in terms of the investigation. And one other aspect pertaining to SATS, which was raised yesterday also, Chair, is that we, we, we needed to comment because there's, there's a matters in the public pertaining to SATS but we can comment that there's only one matter pertaining to SATS that we dealt with and it has been reported. But with other matters that are currently in the, in the space, in the media space, I've confirmed with the Hawks yesterday and they are busy dealing with those matters that has been raised. So they, are not, they have not been reported to SIU uh, as, 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 uh, as of yesterday. Thank you, Chair. Okay, no, thank you very much um, for that. Um, at HOU, we note what you have said insofar as those um, um, high profile investigations are concerned. And um, we will- Because I think there is some very, very important work here. And I really wanna thank them for what they've been doing. What I do want to ask at this point is, and I know it was a long presentation, so I hope I didn't miss it. What is the total amount that is currently the subject of a pres of, of the preservation orders and the freezing in accounts. So I just want to know, and I know that I come back to this every time because I am very concerned where funds get transferred, potentially frozen or made the subject of a preservation order, the length of time it gets before finally the courts make a, a decision and the money is in fact repaid. So I just want to know the total quantum of monies that are currently subject to a preservation order and or freezing of accounts. Thanks. Okay, let's get a response uh, to that. And then uh, Honorable Tulashi will come in. Thank you, Thank you Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair, as we indicated under the civil litigation uh, presentation on the orders that have been obtained, I'm just gonna uh, allow the Chief Legal Counsel uh, to indicate to Honorable Van Minen and Honorable Committee uh, on, the, on, on the total amount <coughs> of, the, of the preservation orders. Uh, Chief Legal Counsel. Dr. Wells. 
Thank you, uh, Advocate Matibi. Um, uh, to the question of the preservation, up, up to this stage is the, the only preservation uh, and forfeit, forfeited amount is the one that was uh, granted in the Ledla matter. Uh, I don't have the specific slide here available, but the quantum in that, uh, of that forfeiture was 26 million rand. Uh, the rest of the orders that we've obtained in relation to some of these, uh, 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 some of the investigation undertaken in terms of uh, the proclamation uh, related to freezing orders, which uh, has not been uh, uh, translated and is still the subject of litigation. The freezing is relating to pensions. Thank you, Advocate Mativi. Uh, honorable chair and honorable members, uh, uh, that that would be on you know, slide twenty nine. Uh, in terms of the orders that have been uh, granted, um, uh, let me see. Uh, so I might just be misleading the committee here, but I'll find the slide the slide number. But, but chair, as I indicated earlier on, uh, that. The legal team is on is on brief to ensure that uh, we execute the, the the orders that have been granted by the special tribunal. Uh, so, Dr. Wells, if you can probably, because uh, the question was, you know, the overall the overall uh, amount of the uh, of of the preservation orders, which could also include the freezing orders. What is the overall amount? And I know you might need to do some calculations. Uh, with your permission, Honorable Member Van Minen and Honorable Chair, we can give you that uh, uh, total order uh, before we close the session today. Thanks. That's that's fine. That's fine. Let me show you. Um, Honorable uh, Tolasha, and then Honorable Somia, and then Honorable Zibula. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, colleagues, and Advocate Atibe and, and, and the team. Uh, Chairperson, I really want to appreciate the good work that is being done by the SIU and everybody who's making sure that corruption is exposed and fought in a very consistent and professional manner. I think as members, we always do appreciate, but today you have done yourselves extraordinary good. Thank you so much. Chair, I really want to, before I go to my mad issues, I really would want to suggest that we might, we don't have enough time today to interrogate the report. I would request your good self to organize another meeting so that we can really panel beat this report to an extent of making sure that we are done with it so that we await for the August one that is going to give us the exact uh, program that has been implemented out of all the investigation and everything else. So I would really want to request you, Chair, to consider another meeting of this kind where we're not going to only receive, but we're only also going to be able to ask questions in an extensive way. That's my plea, Chair. Chair, the first question from me will be the timing between the special tribunal and SIU. When they send matters to a special tribunal, how much does it take? How much time does it take? Whatever it is, are they happy? Aren't there any problems or bottlenecks that they're experiencing? If yes, how best can we assist? Two chair, I heard Advocate Motibi, uh, he's, he, he, he sounds like he's happy with the issue of the protection of witnesses insofar as that those laws that talks to that are concerned. Is that the case? I'm asking this question, Chair, with experience that you picked up from the Zondo Commission, because from where I'm seated, these are the most important people and citizens who decided to come out to come and give the evidence without fear no favor, but their lives are forever at stake. Are they really happy with the kind of protection that those people do receive? The other one, Chair, the, 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 the the outcome of the Dr. Masuku matter, I think it's unprecedented, Chairperson. 
I really would want to hear from the advocate Matibi what did they learn from that and from where we are sitting at the scopa we guess this is what we are going through from all these years since the dawn of democracy when the executive does not take their responsibility so serious to an extent they go out scot free and administrators are the one that must be that must take responsibility i think the masuku matache is a is a very positive breakthrough and i would want to hear more from advocate matibi and the team what did they learn so that we can prepare for the for the ag who now has do have teeth how can we use this breakthrough in all other matters that are relevant to the masuko outcome che the last two, for now i really would want to hear more particular che i'm going to leave everything else in the or tambo matter i think on under referrals we are experienced and we are reading from the newspapers that that municipality district municipality is now uh, having two parallel uh, leadership from the mayor two mayors two speakers and so and so on we know that is not anything else but trying to escape what is coming how best can we together work in making sure that in whatever that is taking place in that regard but the work of the SIU is not being disturbed it must be allowed to carry on even if you have to go and and to court to put uh, something that will make sure whoever comes in as an mm at a particular time is taking full responsibility on what is to be investigated in fact started to ready to be investigated che the last one i hear free state in particular where we don't hear exactly what the, the executive did in making sure that the outcome of of the siu is implemented or there's a slow implementation of of what they are supposed to do the disciplinary processes and so on i would really want to suggest that che let those uh, affected political principles in particular let them brought before the scopa so that they personally give us an update and the progress that they are making in so far as the siu uh, report is concerned so that we put it to them whether they are willing to implement or not because my fear chair here is that the them taking longer to implement is going to open up into what is being said earlier on that you have to go and 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 freeze the pension and so on but some information is getting lost in the process but in so far as accountability is concerned i think those political principles principles must be brought before scopa for them to give us information on what they are doing in so far as this matter is concerned as well as pumalanga i think pumalanga in many departments there, there is that kind of a tendency of a slow pace in responding and implementation on the matters that are being referred to them chairperson let me just pause there uh, in in hoping that my my proposal will be considered for us to hold another meeting so that we really uh, deal with very very an important and informed report chairperson thank you very much um i i noted the proposal uh, and you have uh, been seconded offline but we'll come to it let's just uh, get honorable somio um yeah and then we'll we will we will decide on that uh, proposal uh, when we're done here all right babu somio over to you well, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chairperson and uh, Honourable Members. Um, I, I wish as well to echo um, what my colleagues uh, have said with reference to uh, the work of the SIU. It's, it's really uh, painstaking uh, to see one of the agencies uh, which uh, does work uh, to the extent uh, of balancing up value uh, uh, for money. If I look into the cost of this work um, against uh, the actual alleged uh, amount which is under investigations, 
uh, you could see uh, the extent uh, of that uh, kind of a balance to what at times uh, were exposed to uh, in the private uh, instance. So um, I, I really, I really appreciate uh, uh, that uh, a, a form of commitment and the question of ensuring that uh, whatever is tasked uh, by SIU will give results and, 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 and therefore uh, the services which are paid for uh, are the services uh, which uh, uh, we have derived some uh, value uh, out of such. Secondly, uh, one, one looks into uh, the question of the entire uh, cycle uh, in, as, in as far as the deterrent measures uh, are concerned um, uh, against uh, matters of uh, uh, maladministration, uh, the areas of uh, fraud and corruption, and, and uh, uh, SIU is involved uh, to investigate these matters and uh, uh, chooses uh, a route uh, for uh, civil uh, litigation. And the success rate, which has been expressed so far, um, in as far as the referrals uh, are concerned to the tribunal, uh, is uh, something which I think is enjoyed on the qualitative uh, instance of work, uh, which is put into uh, such kind uh, uh, of a overall process, uh, which I think uh, we need to um, appreciate uh, that uh, scale uh, of work based on that uh, success failure, the, the, the success factor. Uh, the third instance is the in instance that, uh, for me, uh, looking at that uh, a cycle, uh, you would have your SIU. In fact, uh, uh, the, 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 the area of my environment, which is the Auditor General, uh, who has made uh, referrals to uh, the, uh, the unit uh, fusion center. Uh, of a number of uh, infringements, which uh, have gone over um, 8,000 uh, matters, uh, which have been referred uh, in relation with the PPE procurements. And, and, and that alone tells you the extent uh, of such activities, which ought to be um, somewhat looked into further and proved. And this report, uh, its own extent, uh, the work uh, thereof uh, uh, indeed requires some form of an effort from ourselves to ensure that uh, we dig deeper uh, into consequence related matters. Uh, I could hear my colleague is making reference to uh, uh, some provinces. In fact, relatively, all provinces, uh, uh, they, they, they have referrals and they fail uh, to uh, follow uh, disciplinary processes uh, as referred to them uh, in various instances. And, and uh, then one is uh, having a view which says, this, this, this work follows the president's uh, signature. Uh, um, uh, on determination of those areas which ought to be investigated. And uh, that determination is the determination which tells us where the accountability lies uh, in these various instances. So if even ourselves are going to be uh, found wanting everywhere, uh, our hands everywhere, would be like a headless chicken. And, and, and therefore, in appreciation uh, of what the president has done in ensuring that there is a stand fight against matters of corruption, we must find a form of getting back uh, so that uh, we are somewhat given a proper report by the ministerial, ministerial committee which has been formed and adopted by cabinet 
which deals with these matters, rather than inviting everybody uh, into uh, this committee so that we could affirm the fact that we go where Ufele Kona et al, where the accountability uh, somewhat lies. Uh, and this commitment we're talking about is a commitment which has been made at a very difficult time uh, facing our own country uh, when we are challenged by the pandemic and we sought to somewhat put up measures uh, which are going to assist uh, to protect uh, the lives of our own community. So, 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 so in appreciation uh, of that feminist, we really need to follow the structures which have been laid for this process uh, in a way. And, and therefore my proposal with that chair, uh, when we look into this kind of a report, that ministerial committee uh, should be somewhat invited rather than uh, inviting uh, a number of ministers or MECs or premier, let, let's, let's just deal with things uh, in, in that uh, kind of a sequence. And in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fifth instance, uh, I think there are other referrals which are somewhat uh, uh, made here after the SIU's uh, investigations, which are either uh, referring to uh, other uh, uh, state-related uh, uh, institutions which ought to deal with those uh, uh, matters. And, and, and therefore, those institutions themselves have to be invited. Uh, and that's where the slow pace is. That's where another deep problem lies. Uh, you see, when, when, when things have been uh, somewhat investigated in this way, they find uh, cracks and it becomes so difficult uh, for them uh, to find uh, their end, uh, you see, uh, in the line. And, and uh, I, I think that we need to somewhat uh, assemble that team and, and be able to uh, sit with them and, and, and uh, to uh, be, begin to find way uh, of uh, closing these uh, uh, kinds, uh, kinds of uh, uh, matters uh, going, uh, uh, going forward. And lastly, is a, is a fact that uh, from the uh, SRU side, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, these uh, uh, kinds of investigations, the depth of such investigations, the success of such investigations, and, and uh, the, the, the legal instances that we find through some of these investigations. Uh, and and uh, it, it might be necessary that uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the stream of things, we would, would find uh, some correlation on the legal lapses, on the legislative lapses, and on new things which arise uh, out of the findings uh, which uh, relate to these matters uh, of accountability uh, going, uh, going forward. So, so, so we need to line up uh, those instances uh, so that uh, we find relevant institutions that we, we can deal with. Uh, going forward. So that's my proposal. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Mam Zibula. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Honorable members, present, Advocate Motibi and his team. Chairperson, let me welcome the detailed report from the SIU. Thank you very much for doing such a good job. But Chair, the progress to date is slow when it comes to action against the officials. Their cases happened last year, but disciplinary hearings have not commenced as yet. Other cases are also waiting for the outcomes. 
So I want to ask the advocate how he can, how we can overcome this problem we are having. I thank you, Chair. Okay, and um, thank you very much, Mam Zibula. That's very, very important, actually, because if it does not translate into consequence management, then um, after having spent so much money, the, re the recoveries are good. But uh, as you also said, it has to be uh, consequences which are commensurate with the, the deed of, of corruption. So I think you are on the, on the, on the money there. Right, let's hand over to and then of course I note the two proposals um, which uh, have been made, well there's three in fact, um, one that we, um, HOU, if I can also get your comment on this, uh, that we find another day where you will now field questions on these issues because I'm afraid if we rush it, we may not do justice uh, to it. Uh, and I think that's where Mam Gulash was coming from, and Honorable Fan Minen has said the same. And, but as I indicated, she's got that load shouldering problem. Um, and then there's the issue on our side, colleagues, that we will have to consider um, on how we get a consolidated update on the part of those who must now implement these things. Because as you saw, the long schedules. But let's hand over to the um, SIU and then we'll take it from there. I won't tell you over to you. Uh, Honorable Chair, thank you very much <clears throat> uh, for, for the opportunity to respond. Uh, Honorable Chair, our view then on the, on the uh, I suppose it's ultimately the committee's call, uh, the decision, but we will be available uh, to further engage and respond to questions that the honorable members could have upon further consideration of the report, uh, and how it was presented today. I think it's only fair uh, uh, to, to, to be able to engage uh, prudently uh, and uh, in, in, in detail. Because Chair, uh, without really diminishing the other investigations that we do, we, we prioritized this investigation around PPEs because as we also went on record and said, in fact, this is the, this is the, um, the sort of a fest of where we see the scale of corruption in any particular investigation. Uh, and for obvious reasons that uh, the importance of the PPEs to the lives of the South Africans uh, uh, and, and to prioritize it. Chair, Honorable Chair, like we prioritized the Health Sector Anti-Corruption Forum. It's because this corruption in this space threatened people's lives. And I still say we are not diminishing the importance of other investigations that we do, but we prioritized this just so that we can really uh, uh, dig deep, bring out the findings, and I do really agree and would like to, you know, uh, uh, report to the committee that would be pleased if uh, all those who are responsible, political principals, accounting officers and authorities can really be made to account. Um, our legislation at the moment doesn't really the, the SIU Act, that is, doesn't really provide uh, 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 any sort of next steps. But the next steps that we are doing are administrative in nature, where we have to follow up. And I'm possibly also re responding to Mam Zebula's question. We follow up administratively to ensure that the actions are taken. We we, we really, really would like to see our findings being implemented and those responsible held to account. But Chair, while we also have the administrative uh, process available to us, there is really nothing that says, ultimately when we realize 
that the accounting authorities are not doing their work in a manner that is expected. There's nothing that says SIU cannot institute legal proceedings to compel, to compel these accounting authorities to do their work. But that is probably the very last uh, uh, option and, 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 and possibly uh, that would not be uh, uh, invoked uh, given what the Honorable Committee would do in, in, in holding this accounting authorities uh, to account in implementing the, the actions that uh, in law and by their duty, they are duty bound to implement and, and, and uh, uh, institute these disciplinary hearings. Um, uh, I would like to uh, uh, also just say, Honorable Tolasha, you indicated around the time between the special tribunal uh, and when we institute uh, the civil proceedings. Uh, I have requested uh, our civil chief legal counsel uh, to note that and respond. But just to indicate, um, at the moment, we really don't have material issues to report relating to matters that we refer to, to the special tribunal. Uh, in fact, uh, we initially, when the special tribunal started to operate, we immediately recognized uh, that uh, uh, as SIU, we needed to uh, increase the resources in the civil litigation space. And those resources, we have gone some way in, in improving those because these so-called uh, case administration, it's viewed as an important aspect of this litigation process because it enables the judges to determine whether the matter is ready for hearing or not. And that was the part that was suffering a few months ago, uh, which was pointed out by the special tribunal that uh, you know, SIU needed to up its game on that one. Uh, and we engaged with the, uh, uh, the, the, the state attorney, uh, but, but we have since built our own capacity now to be able to drive that space. And it's going well at the moment. Um, uh, at the moment, we've got uh, you know, several cases that we have, uh, that we have uh, enrolled at the special tribunal over and above the COVID-19 cases. And those matters, uh, I think they are in the tune of more than 7 billion, uh, uh, more than about 60 cases up to now. And the judges have indicated to us that they are willing and ready to adjudicate on all those matters. Uh, so so from, a, from a process perspective, there are really no deficiencies or issues that, uh, that, we, can, that we can really uh, report as being, as being uh, uh, problematic in the process as to delay the litigation process. Uh, on the, on the, um, the former MEC of Health, uh, Dr. Masuku's matter, uh, the ruling, uh, Dr. Masuku's ruling, we'll call it like that, uh, because it's a, it's a ruling in the, in, in, in the, in, in the Masuku case. Uh, it's unfortunate that we'll probably keep on referring to it like that. But as a case, as a, as, as a ruling, uh, uh, Honorable Tolashe, it, we agree. It is, uh, it is a groundbreaking decision, which really requires for all the executive authorities to understand uh, so that they can be able to execute their functions appropriately. And to that, to that end, uh, our civil litigation team uh, is preparing uh, a note, uh, a briefing note, which will probably turn into a presentation form uh, which we can present to SCOPA, uh, to the Honorable Committee at the, uh, probably at the next, uh, the next time we appear, at any time we are given. Because it, it's got, it's really got uh, a whole lot of implications which we would like to outline, uh, unpacking that ruling, un unpacking that, uh, 
court decision. So we would like to prepare that uh, so that uh, we can indicate to the honorable committee what we have learned and what the implications of that decision is. So what we are offering chair is that we would prepare a comprehensive presentation that we can present to the honorable committee relating to the implication of that, of that ruling. On the OR Tambo, um, uh, we will monitor that space. The extent to which it prejudices, firstly, our investigation or the implementation of our outcomes, uh, we will ensure that is recorded and uh, probably raised in accordance with the process with the executive authority responsible, but we'll also make sure that where it really prejudices our outcomes and an investigation, we'll have to determine what legal recourse do we have um, and, and, and then ensure that, uh, that it's implemented. Uh, on, the, on the free state matter, and I've just looked at it, um, where, where a disciplinary matter was referred and an official was transferred. This is the, the progress report we received from the Free State team. And I do agree, honorable chair, honorable members, that uh, uh, an accounting authorities and executive authorities responsible uh, could you know, be requested to really come and indicate to scope what are they doing to ensure that uh, uh, these recommendations are carried out. I've indicated there's various instances where the progress to date as we received it is that no disciplinary actions has yet been, been instituted. This is an unnecessary delay because our view is that if there's a disciplinary process to be taken, it must be taken speedily. Of course, we, are, we, we appreciate that it's got to be taken within the legal process, fair process to be taken, but it's got to start. It's got to be implemented so that it is demonstrable that uh, consequence management has been, has, been, uh, has been implemented. Um, uh, Honorable Somio, we really appreciate uh, the, the comments and they are really encouraging. And we would like to ensure that uh, uh, from our side, uh, particularly around the recoveries, uh, the recoveries we need to make sure that wherever those orders are given by the special tribunal, we have to make sure that we speed up the process to convert those orders into actual money that is, uh, that is, that, that is recovered. Uh, the, it, it, it's going to, to be the case that even come August, when we almost complete the investigations on hand, we will still be having this role at the special tribunal. So at the end of the investigations, we will now, and in fact, already, already we are seeing it, that there's a quite a number of results that are on the, on the table. We just need to make sure that those results are actualized. Whether it's referral to disciplinary process, referrals to NPA, referrals to the special tribunal, that is the part which really will make an impact in terms of all these investigations. The resources that we have uh, made to make sure that we investigate as speedily as we did, now the impact has to be felt by implementing those, uh, those, uh, th those referrals. So the, the recoveries, uh, Honorable Somio, will ensure that, that they are speeded up. Uh, the, I really appreciate the concept around the, the entire cycle of deterrence. That cycle of deterrence that Honorable Somio refers to has got aspects in it, you know. Uh, uh, the effectiveness of implementing disciplinary hearings, effectiveness of prosecution, effectiveness of recoveries, effectiveness of uh, proactive measures of, of uh, preventing the, the occurrence of these corrupt activities and the maladministration. Thank you really for the comment of digging deep into issues of consequence management. Without that, uh, we, will not make, we will not make an, an impact. Um, uh, the other referrals to other state institutions, 
Yes, because we have referred to the Competition Commission, we have referred to SARS, we have referred to SAPRA, and other, and other regulator authorities will, will, will pro- probably, in the same way as we would like to hear from the accounting authorities, what are they doing with the referrals, will probably will want to get feedback on those, uh, on those uh, uh, regulatory bodies on, on how are they handling uh, the referrals. Uh, I'd like to just uh, at this stage, Honorable Chair, just uh, hand to the Chief Legal Counsel uh, uh, if he's got uh, further comments to make around the timing between the special tribunal and the bottlenecks. Uh, so Dr. Wells, if you could just complete that part, please. Uh, thank you, HAU, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Um, uh, I can confirm what the head of the unit mentioned. Um, uh, at this point in time, as, uh, as of now, we have uh, acquired and, and, and uh, uh, additional resources to deal with uh, all the matters. Uh, there was an escalation of matters uh, due to the uh, uh, investigations outcome of COVID-20, uh, of the COVID investigations. We've managed to, to, uh, to recruit additional resources we're managing that process, uh, and uh, there is absolutely no bottlenecks uh, um, at the tribunal as it is. Um, all cases are properly uh, case managed and is uh, being heard by, by the tribunal and is properly managed from our side uh, based on, uh, on, on, on uh, our, our personnel that have been uh, accommodated within the environment of the state attorney, seconded to the state attorney. Uh, one additional uh, concern uh, initially, but not really causing a bottleneck, was the ju- jurisdictional aspect that the head has already alluded to, has now unequivocally been dealt with in the Ledla matter, uh, where the ju- tribunal confirmed that it is a court. So that, that has been emphatically dealt with. In addition to possible bottlenecks or frustration within the procedures and processes of the tribunal, the SAU has now also finalized its draft legislation, uh, which would ensure further uh, efficiency and effectiveness within the special tribunal. Uh, Thank you, uh, HAU. And thank you for informing the Honorable Committee on the draft amendments that we have submitted. We have submitted those yesterday to the Department of Justice to put them through the legislative program. Amongst others in the draft amendments, we're dealing with this issue around the special tribunal being a court or not being a court. But of course, they've already ruled that it's a court. But we also need to deal with this issue around uh, the, the, the peremptoriness or the, the binding nature of the, of, of, of the SIU referrals. Uh, uh, we, we, would, we really would like to ensure that uh, the implementation of our referrals is strengthened in that sense. Uh, and of course, yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the draft legislation will be questioned, will be uh, interrogated. We are really hoping that at the end, it gives, it gives us the, the SIU this, uh, uh, these provisions uh, that would ensure that the, the, the referrals are implemented. The, the amendments deal with various other, other enablement provisions, uh, and appro- I'm sure at an appropriate time in the legislative process, the Honorable Committee will probably have sight of those amendments. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much, um, HOU, and to your team. Um, colleagues, let me suggest maybe the, the following. Because the SIU transmits its reports to the presidency, uh, and I would imagine it's at that point where the affected parties must be um, informed, for lack of a better term. Um, that's the link that we need to create. And Honorable Sumi makes the point um, about the ministerial task team, interministerial task team as well. 
So I think we'll have to look at the modalities of that because they, we, if you're going to call all those implicated persons, um, it may end up being a, an exercise in futility um, in the absence of a coordinated approach in terms of enforcing what the outcomes of the SIU reports could be. Um, and then the flip side of that coin is the interaction which is needed with the NPA. And so far as prosecutions of some of these matters are concerned where those should be happening. So I think we're gonna we'll take it forward in that fashion. Um, we will um, advise the presidency that we have been receiving these uh, reports. And we would now like a, an update on the second leg of them, which is their implementation, so that uh, they can then solicit uh, the action steps that have been taken to implement some of these things, if not all of them, uh, in the relevant spaces. Uh, so whether that's the ministry and the presidency or the IMC, one of the two, um, they will have to come back and brief us now uh, on these, on these um, issues. Or the flip side of the coin, of course, is that um, we dispatch correspondence to all of the affected parties and ask them to um, give us an update in terms of where they are. So those options, colleagues, are available to us, and we will look at them. Um, we will be in touch uh, in terms of the date if members uh, still feel that we need to interrogate uh, what Mam Dolasha to use her words, panel beat uh, the report. So we will we will be in touch. It was a, 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 a very extensive uh, and a presentation, uh, and we would hate not to do justice to it, and we certainly don't want to uh, rush it. Uh, so I think let us uh, do that, colleagues, and we will look for a date. Uh, in consultation with the office of the um, SIU, and then we will um, have that meeting to take these matters further. Uh, the issue of our Tambo colleagues is probably a, a perennial headache of some sort, in the sense that um, there is other developments there following our oversight visit. I've been in trying to be get in touch with the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on COCTA because we may need to go back um, to OR Tambo because since we left we there in the past three weeks, there have been issues which have emanated which will don't inspire confidence at all uh, that the situation will be resolved. So further intervention on our part may be required so if colleagues can be on standby for that, we will consult uh, the House Chairperson because the issues that are being raised by the SIU here uh, are in part going to be compromised if the situation does not stabilize for the better uh, in that part of the world. Uh, so we do need to um, deal with that particular uh, matter as well. Um, so, we, 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 we appreciate the fact that, you know, there are blacklistings and we note the referrals that you have made um, for DC, uh, but of course, th those are all issues now which are outside your, your hands per se, as you say, and so we do need to find ways and means uh, to strengthen your hand as the SIU, and we will certainly be looking at that as well, it, it's to our advantage. Uh, that you, 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 do, you do that. But I must say it is concerning that, I mean, the investigations um, are going to be costing as much as they do. Um, so colleagues, let us um, park it at that and say we are holding the meeting in abeyance uh, for now, and uh, we will consider a date to interrogate these matters further uh, when we, we meet uh, next week, because we'll also be dealing with the matter um, of DBSA uh, so that we it's the DBSA matter and the SIU matter and then we'll take it from there. So Babum TV, let me say thank you very much to you and your team uh, for thank a you. very comprehensive presentation uh, which illustrates the a great amount of work that has been done and we appreciate uh, the fact that uh, there have been recoveries 
and that the potential recoveries, of course, uh, are also then you'll be working towards that. So we'll await your next report, but before then, we'll be interacting to tie down on some of these issues, and then we'll take it from there. But colleagues, are there any other issues that you'd like to raise? Let me check the group. Uh, all right, colleagues, let me thank you very much. And then say that the sitting is at um, 1400 hours this afternoon, which is the budget vote, budget vote number one, the presidency. And then we will be in touch in the coming days in terms of our coordination to meet on the other matters. On that note, um, colleagues, the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Long live the chair. Oh, Thank you, Chair. Bring Salim. Bring Salim. <laughs> Thanks, Long live the chair. <laughs> <laughs> See you in the house, colleagues. Take care. Recording stop. Chair. Thank you, Bye.